After picking up a point in Pittsburgh on Wednesday night, the Rowdies return home sweet home tonight, and earning three points is more important than ever before. Tampa Bay trying to take down top-ranked FC Cincinnati tonight, looking to break their record-setting 14-game unbeaten streak. It's the Rowdies versus FC Cincinnati tonight in St. Petersburg, and your live Rowdies pregame show starts right now. A very stormy evening here in downtown St. Petersburg. It is going to be a wet one tonight at Alang Stadium. Hello, everyone, and welcome to your Rowdies pregame show live on This TV Tampa Bay. Heather Donnelly joining you not from the concourse of Alang Stadium. We are up in the broadcast control room because of the weather right now as the Rowdies get set to host the top team in the Eastern Conference, FC Cincinnati. We'll check in with the rest of our broadcast crew, play-by-play -play man Drew Felios and color commentator Eddie Rodriguez in just a little bit. But first, let's dive right in and take a look at the Rowdies' starting 11 for tonight's match. Taking a look at this starting 11, we've got Daniel Vega making his second start in goal for the Rowdies. Sebastian Guenzotti and Junior Flemings up top. And of course, Zach Portillos, who returned in our last home game out there on the left side. Last week, the Rowdies announced the signing of goalkeeper Daniel Vega, who made his Rowdies debut Wednesday night in Pittsburgh, making three saves in that match. The experienced keeper has spent the last three seasons with Miami FC, but has also played in South America and Europe, including 76 appearances for Argentine side River Plate. With Miami FC, Vega won the 2017 NASL Golden Glove Award after playing every minute of the season and earning 15 clean sheets. He also helped Miami FC to win the NPSL National Championship this summer. Great to have another talented keeper join Cody Mizell and Akira Fitzgerald on the roster. And now let's look at tonight's injury report. Unfortunately, we have one Rowdies player added to that injury report after Wednesday night's game, Stefano Bonomo, questionable with a left ankle injury. And then we've also got David Najem, Kyle Karinga, and Lance Roseboom with those long-term injuries. And now we welcome in Drew Felios. Since joining the Rowdies in July, Drew, Stefano Bonomo has brought so much to the Rowdies. What has he meant to the team, and how can they fill that gap tonight? Offensively, Heather, he has really, really changed things. Think of this, since July 3rd when he was signed to Tampa Bay, Bonomo has either scored or assisted on 59% of the Rowdies' goals. So he has been huge playing up top, such an imposing force up there, and made a difference as soon as he cracked that starting 11. Now, without him, you know we're going to rely on Junior Flemings. Flemings has been outstanding this summer. Also, Joe Cole could offer some offensive punch. Leon Taylor, he's got three goals to his credit. He's been quiet lately. Perhaps he could get going here tonight. But without Bonomo, certainly a much different side for the Rowdies, especially on set pieces with that height. Heather, that's going to be huge here tonight. Yeah, absolutely, Drew. Luckily, the Rowdies do have that deep roster. Plenty of guys to take that spot. Well, now let's hear from Rowdies head coach Neil Collins, who spoke with Drew Felios down under the tunnels in Allang Stadium a little while ago. Obviously very soft field conditions tonight. How does this affect the pace of play? Um, the fact that we've got the best groundsman in the league, you know, Jeff's done a great job. He's covered the fields. I know there's a lot of rainfall, but I think the field's in such good condition it shouldn't affect it too much. And um, if anything, it'll speed the game up and make, make for an exciting game. Junior came up huge on Wednesday night. Who has to join him tonight in order to be successful and beat this FC Cincinnati juggernaut? Everyone, everyone from goalie through to the attackers, through to the lads that are on the bench, and that's including the lads that don't come on. Uh, people say all the time it's a team game, and that, that's the truth because the lads that are starting, the lads that are going to come on and make an impact, to beat a team like Cincinnati and to beat anyone in this league, you need everyone to contribute, and we're going to need that tonight. I know that the fact that Rowdy's played on Wednesday, are they fit tonight, are they ready? Are they rested and raring to go? 100%. If they're not motivated for tonight, then there's, there's an issue, and they are definitely motivated. Thanks, Coach. Good, cheers, Drew. After the team's training session yesterday, Junior Flemings reflected on his goal against Pittsburgh and the challenge of facing top-ranked Cincinnati tonight.
To actually score, you know, in Pittsburgh, they only gave up two goals all season. I mean, you know, that says a lot, and also for the team, team spirit. I mean, we're at a point in the season now where, you know, we have to get maximum point at home. So it doesn't matter who we're playing against, what formation the opponent is playing. We just got to go after it and try to get three points. These are teams that you want to play against, you know, especially, I mean, they're going to the MLS, so, you know, you actually want to prove a point against them and in terms of showing that, you know, like you can dominate, it doesn't matter who is playing for them, you know, which player they go and get, but just on the day, you know, it's just who wants it more. I always tell the defenders, you know, like, you guys keep it zero and then, you know, count on us up top to put the ball in the net and uh, I think eight out of ten times, you know, we can actually promise them that we're going to put the ball in the net once they keep it at zero, so... I think we're at a point of the season now where we know that, okay, once it's zero up to the point of 60, 70 a minute, we've got to get a goal because we need it and we need everyone to be pushing at this point. So I think we are going to be going after it. Well, after a weekend off for some well-deserved rest, the Rowdies return to the field on Wednesday night in Pittsburgh. When we come back, we'll look at the highlights from that showdown in the Steel City. Stick around. St. Pete Clearwater, home to Clearwater Beach. The number one beach in the U.S. is chosen by travelers on TripAdvisor. It's not just white sand and gulf breezes. The beach is an attitude. It's the vibe of whatever brings you joy. Experience the American tropics on Florida's Gulf Coast. Visit stpeclearwater.com. Welcome back to our Rowdies pregame show live on this TV Tampa Bay fans hiding out on the concourse as rain is still coming down here in downtown St. Petersburg and we're hiding out here in the broadcast control room of Alang Stadium not down on the concourse this evening and now we welcome in Drew Felios to catch us up on the Rowdies midweek action Drew after conceding a goal at the end of the first half on Wednesday in Pittsburgh the Rowdies managed to find an equalizer and come home with a very important point. Yeah, they certainly did. Pittsburgh, remember, they were here at Outlink Stadium earlier this season, and that wound up as a 2-2 draw. Rowdies would, again, play them tough in their house on Wednesday night. Let's check out some of those highlights from the Steel City. Rowdies and Hounds on Wednesday night on that hard turf. Seventh minute off the corner kick, Joe Cole misses an acrobatic attempt, and then Georgie Ristoff can't get enough of it. Goalie Mike Kirk avoids further danger. One more look there, you see Ristoff close to it, just could not put it in the back of the net. Okay, later first half, Cristiano Francois lining it up from 20 yards out, just inches away. Pittsburgh controlling possession and dictating the pace in the first half. Still nil-nil into stoppage time in the first half. Hounds with the throw in. Mohamed Dabo, a rocket. Bam. Gets it past Daniel Vega, 1-0 Pittsburgh. Vega would concede for his first time as a Tampa Bay Rowdy. That shot just perfectly placed. 65th minute now. Ristoff would head off. Junior Flemings comes on. 
Could Junior find an opening in the Pittsburgh defense? Just minutes later, off the goal kick, Martin Vingard, watch this perfect pass right here. Junior Flemings in position, gets by the last line of defense and the equalizer past Mike Kirk. Junior Flemings has been the go-to guy all summer for the Rowdies and he comes through again. The Rowdies would escape with a 1-1 draw on the road. Pittsburgh simply could not put away Tampa Bay. And Junior Flemings, who's had such an up and down year, comes through for the Rowdies and the Rowdies able to salvage one point. Joined now by my partner, former MLS and Liga MX star Eddie Rodriguez. So it's a battle with Pittsburgh. They get a point. You know, it's amazing. A couple weeks ago, they dominate play against North Carolina and the Rowdies, they lose 2 nothing. Eddie, what gives in this crazy season? You're absolutely right, Drew. So it comes down to putting your chances away. As you talked about, NCFC came in town. The Rowdies dominated. They were not able to capitalize on their chances. They only had one, a late chance against the Pittsburgh Riverhounds. Fleming comes, comes up huge. And that goal right there was able to save a point on the road. Junior Flemings. Had so many tough times at the beginning of this year. You talked to him earlier this week in practice. What is the difference between his game at the start of the year and now? You're right. He said it's about maturity. It's about taking the time. He's so fast. He's so dominating that a lot of times he doesn't know he's got that much time in spades. Now he's actually settling down, looking at the goal, and just putting that ball away without having to kill it. He's becoming a better forward because he's maturing all along. Good stuff, Eddie. All right, Heather, we'll send it back to you. Thanks, guys. An important point on the road for Tampa Bay, but they'll need to start picking up three points as we get closer to the end of the season, especially here at home, if they want a shot at making the postseason. The top eight teams in each conference make the USL playoffs and as you can see they're currently in 12th place with 28 points and some ground to make up over the next month and a half. Well the Rowdies have great skills on the soccer pitch but are they any good in the kitchen? We asked the team to rate their cooking skills. Take a look. I should be better. My mom's a chef but I guess I was a little spoiled growing up so I let her do all the cooking but now now I do quite a bit. I'm not you know, nothing crazy. I pretty much cook the same things every day but I could throw down on the grill. I'm nice on the grill. I love to barbecue, and, and you can ask you can ask Nod. She'll probably tell you I've whipped up a couple things in the apartment so far, and I think got good reviews. So I think I think I'm above average. No, I not cook a lot. I cook only eggs or something fast. Out of ten, you'd say nine and a half. Yeah, I'm really good cook. I think I'm a very good cook. I like to cook. So nine out of ten, I think my wife would say about the same. My wife's a very good cook. So I've learned a few things from her. Cooking skills decent. I'm, I'm pretty happy with my cooking skills. I'd go, I've got a strong eight. Eight out of 10, strong eight. Oh, average at best. Not, not the best. Oh, I'd rate those like negative one. I am not a very good cook. Um, chicken and rice is usually like the go-to. Terrible. <laughs> I never cook. Uh, Non-existence, um, don't cook. I moved out from my mum's house straight into straight into living with my wife Carly so I've really been looked after and, um, and pampered so I don't tend not to cook. I can do beans on toast, I don't know if that, that counts. I mean I can't try because um, I'm still surviving, you know, yeah, cooking for myself and still surviving so I'm not so good but uh, yeah, I can try. Average, honestly I don't do a lot of like spices and stuff, it gets kind of plain but I like it. I'll eat food's energy, so just cook it up and eat it. Cook it up and eat it. There you go from Alex Morrell. Well, Rowdy's defender Tam McCandawiri is one of the longest tenured Rowdies, second only to Georgie Ristoff. After the break, we sit down with the center back to reflect on his career here in Tampa Bay and what's in the future for him and his family. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, we want you to eat better and feel better with smoothies made from better for you ingredients and food crafted with the bold flavors you love, like our Chipotle Chicken Club flatbread with grilled chicken, bacon, pepper jack, and chipotle mayo, or our island green smoothie with fresh kale and spinach, banana, mango, and pineapple. Life's too good to settle for anything less. Chipotle Chicken Club and Island Green Smoothie at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Eat better, feel better. Florida Print Solutions is St. Petersburg's leader for the best quality, service, marketing, and printing solutions for your business, always with free pickup and delivery. At Florida Print Solutions, we stand for our community. Superior product quality, effective business solutions, and of course, we stand for printing. 
Make your next call to Florida Print Solutions and take your business image to the next level. Florida Print Solutions is an official sponsor of the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Jennifer Davis was the last person you'd expect to have a heart attack. But despite appearances, she had a spontaneous coronary artery dissection of the left anterior descending artery. But after being rushed to BayCare's St. Anthony's Hospital cath lab, doctors inserted two stents which opened her artery. And thank heaven this extremely rare attack was treated at an extremely rare hospital. Welcome back to our Rowdies pregame show live on this TV, Tampa Bay. The Tarps coming off here at Alang Stadium, getting ready to go as the Rowdies are getting set to host FC Cincinnati. Taking a look at the conditions for kickoff tonight, a 100% chance of rain, 75 degrees, and cloudy with thunderstorms. So we'll see. Uh, it's going to be a wet one tonight here in downtown St. Pete. Well, Rowdy center back Tamika McCandewiri joined the Rowdies back in 2014 and has since made 99 appearances for the club. Recently, he's been planning for his future after he hangs up his cleats, hoping to someday pursue a career in broadcasting. This week, we sat down with the longtime Rowdy to reflect on his time in the green and gold. It's mixed emotions. I'm, I'm obviously sad to, to finish my career. You know, it's, it's pretty much all I've known. Collins set it back, a shot, goal! And the Rowdies have got one back! Right in the heart, header on off the crossbar, shot in the go, there you go, Tamika McCandewiri. But I'm ready, you know what, I'm, I'm at peace with my decision. It's almost hard to quantify, you know, someone like Tam's value. I think a word that always comes to mind with Tam is just his professionalism. I'm very professional and uh, just a very good person in general. I can easily say that he's one of the best uh, teammates I've had uh, in my whole career. Just being in in that environment of, you know, doing something that you love. It's a job, but it's not really a job, so it's, it's going to be hard to replace, that's for sure. Yeah, we had a big, big part to play in the end of the season, but family always comes first, and when a decision like this is made for the better of your family, I can, uh, I can understand that, because I'm a family man first and foremost myself. Heading, heading out to the West Coast, going to take a bit of a break, but also look for some new opportunities, see what opens up. I think Tam would do great at everything just because the mentality he has about things. Uh, if, if he's going to do it, he's going to do it right. I've really enjoyed broadcasting. I've never done it before this season. Confidence is always high after a win, but we can't be complacent. Keep on getting better every day in training and hopefully that will show um, in the matches to come. I think Tam's definitely got the face for, for TV. Tam's got great knowledge of the game. I've watched his rowdies run down. Always very insightful for, for fans. I'm sure he's going to be a man of many talents. It's my, my, actually my daughter's birthday today. She was 10 months when we came here, so she's grown up with the rowdies, you know, being in the US is all she's known, and obviously my son, he's just turned two. One of the things I wanted was for him to be able to, you know, come to the rowdies and sort of understand that, um, you know, daddy was a, was a soccer player. A fantastic parent, um, obviously a great husband, so I've spent time with him and his family and um, he's just the same as he is on the pitch, always, uh, always reliable, always there doing the right things. He's a great, great husband and a great father. Um, my, my daughter is, uh, and his daughter are best friends. They were still babies when they, you know, when they got here. They've uh, followed me around for, for a while. I think we've moved, I think, eight times in, in seven years. Um, just to have that constant at home, that, that's kept me, kept me going and, and the support is, is huge. The fans here are something else, you know, they've been fantastic. Just the support and, and the love has been, been crazy. Yeah. Some of them I've got to know personally and I speak to every game and, you know, they come to meet us at the airport after road trips and you don't often see that kind of dedication. The Cosmos and the Rowdies rivalry is obviously always going to be big, goes back a long way. So. I think it was my first season and I scored a left foot half volley. Now we're with a touch, Kandawiri! A goal, Kandawiri! Kandawiri! 
to win the game and to score was, was, was really good for me. I really enjoyed that moment. You know, the Rowdies is like a family and it's been an, an, an honour to wear, to wear the Rowdies badge and the, the green and gold. Just so grateful to, to have been a part of it. Well, Drew, Tam announcing officially yesterday that he will be retiring after tonight. This will be his last match. He's had 99 appearances in green and gold. We'll see if he can get that 100th tonight. But what a loss this is going to be for the Rowdies organization. So many thoughtful words by his teammates and a great job by our crew, Holly Claire, for putting that piece together. But the one word that comes to mind when I think of Tam McCandewere is going to be gentlemen. He waited his turn. He came up here and worked with us the very first regular season game, and he did it seamlessly. He is a natural in this broadcasting, just like he is on the pitch in this great game of soccer. And when Neil Collins became the head coach of the Rowdies midseason, when Tam's number was called, he was ready, made 11 starts for the Rowdies before going out. So gentlemen is the word, and he is certainly going to be missed, Heather. Absolutely. Best of luck to Tam and his family. Certainly a bright future ahead for Tam. Well, kickoff is coming up quickly, and it's going to be a tough one for Tampa Bay against first place Cincinnati. When we come back, we'll take a closer look at Eastern Conference powerhouse FC Cincinnati and preview tonight's match. Stick around. Life. It's not measured by the breaths we take, but by the moments that take our breath away. Life is the unlimited possibilities all around us. It's the interesting people we meet, the epic places we see, the incredible memories we create. Life is always going on. All you have to do is choose to live it. Full of life, Mohegan Sun. It's time to celebrate and save at Ashley Home Store's anniversary sale. Save 35% on furniture and mattresses. Or get 72 months no interest on new styles to celebrate your home. Going on now at America's number one furniture and mattress store. Hurry in and save at Ashley Home Store. This is home. Florida Print Solutions is St. Petersburg's leader for the best quality, service, marketing, and printing solutions for your business, always with free pickup and delivery. At Florida Print Solutions, we stand for our community. Superior product quality, effective business solutions, and of course, we stand for printing. Make your next call to Florida Print Solutions and take your business image to the next level. Florida Print Solutions is an official sponsor of the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Game show live on this TV, Tampa Bay. The tarp still coming off here at Al Lang Stadium. Fans gathering in the concourse, ready for some action tonight at Al Lang as the Rowdies are getting set to host top ranked FC Cincinnati. Tonight will be the second time the Rowdies and FC Cincinnati have faced off this season. The first time was back on the road in July, on July 14th. Both teams had good chances in that match, but the home team would come out on top thanks to two second-half goals by Cincinnati's impressive attacking duo of Emmanuel Ledesma and Danny Koenig. FC Cincinnati shutting out the Rowdies 2-0 at Nippert Stadium. And now taking a closer look at FC Cincinnati, they are coached by head coach Alan Koch, who's in his second season with the team. A 16-3 and 6 record, very good stuff from FC Cincinnati, and they are on a 14-game unbeaten streak, which is a club record. And of course, when you have just three losses on the season, you're bound to be high up in the standings and FC Cincinnati sits comfortably in first place in the Eastern Conference with 54 points. Check out that nine point cushion between them and the rest of the pack. It'll be tough. It'll be a tough task for any team to jump them for the top playoff seed at this point in the season. 
Both the Rowdies and FC Cincinnati are coming off midweek road games. Cincinnati hit the road to St. Pete following a big 5-1 win against Atlanta United 2 on Wednesday night. Here's what goalkeeper Spencer Ritchie had to say on Thursday about facing the Rowdies after a busy week of travel. We flew this morning, so it's good. Um, you know, some of the guys that played more minutes did more of a regen. Some guys that didn't play as many did um, a little bit of a session. But, you know, it's hot down here and, and games are coming thick and fast. So, um, you know, it's about catching up on sleep and, and uh, taking care of yourself off the field to make sure, you know, you're good to go for Saturday. They're, you know, a team, you know, playing with their backs against the wall with nothing to lose. Um, sometimes they're the scariest teams to play against, you know. Um, you know, we're the, we know that they're in kind of a, a, a playoff mindset already. They got, um, you know, to, to climb the table a little bit um, to get in, in the playoff hunt. So uh, we'll be ready for it. You know, we've been in good form uh, lately as well. So it should be a fun game. And now we'll send it up to Drew and Eddie joining us again live in the broadcast booth. Guys, a busy week for both of these teams, both coming off action on Wednesday night. But it's going to be a tough one for the Rowdies facing the top-ranked team in the Eastern Conference. It certainly will, Heather, because the last time, two weeks ago, that the Rowdies were here in that match against North Carolina. Remember, Eddie, they had a Wednesday game three nights earlier, and they shared pretty well against Charleston, but they looked a little bit gassed towards the end. Same situation tonight. I actually asked Coach Collins, is everything going to be okay? Is the team going to be fit? He said yes. Your thoughts? Yeah, you're right. You know, you talked about the last 20 minutes of that match when pretty much you could tell that the wheels just fell off the wagon. They were not connecting. Mm -hmm. They were not defending, and that's actually how they got scored on late in the game. So for them, it's about mental 40 to stay until the end, playing 90-plus minutes to get a W tonight. All right. Also tremendous. Uh, the defense is going to have to be defending Manny Ledesma. Here's a look at that last match, though, and what we were talking about with North Carolina. Those legs got a little bit heavy towards the end, and Coach Collins admitted. He said our guys just simply didn't have it at the end. And tonight, he hopes it's a different story. Yeah, for tonight, of course, you have to contain Ledesma, who's a threat for Cincinnati all the time. A player that we know can score. He was one of the two players that scored last time the Rowdies played in Cincinnati. So you got to keep an eye on him at all times. Very tricky, very good forward, and just a tremendous finisher. You know, we talk about Ledesma, but right now, Eddie, this is a franchise that just has been clicking on all guns a blazing. Everything that they do, everything they touch is turning to gold right now. The Rowdies are going to have their hands full. Yeah, so many things going for them. Of course, they have the MLS franchise coming next year. So, so many things to look forward to for them. They're trying to get out of here this year in the USL and win the whole thing. They've never won, though, here at Al Lang Stadium, Heather. So hopefully tonight the Rowdies could keep it that way. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you, guys, and thank you all for watching. That wraps up our pregame show. For Drew Felios, Eddie Rodriguez, and our entire broadcast crew, I'm Heather Donnelly. Thanks for watching. Rowdies versus FC Cincinnati is coming up. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, we want you to eat better and feel better with smoothies made from better-for-you ingredients and food crafted with the bold flavors you love, like our Chipotle Chicken Club flatbread with grilled chicken, bacon, pepper jack, and chipotle mayo, or our Island Green Smoothie with fresh kale and spinach, banana, mango, and pineapple. Life's too good to settle for anything less. Chipotle Chicken Club and Island Green Smoothie at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Eat better, feel better. St. Pete Clearwater, 
home to 35 miles of white sand bliss. But it's more than emerald surf and gulf breezes. The beach is an attitude. It's the vibe of life, nature, art, music, or whatever brings you joy. Experience the American tropics on Florida's Gulf Coast in St. Pete Clearwater. Love the beach. A live look at Al Lang Stadium on another soccer Saturday night. The Tampa Bay Rowdies getting set to host FC Cincinnati, one of the key games in this 2018 season, temporarily being delayed at the moment. Hopefully the players will get out as soon as the tarp is removed and we could slowly begin the process of playing this match here tonight. Drew Felios alongside former MLS and Liga MX star Eddie Rodriguez. Eddie, when the tarps come off and hopefully when we play soccer tonight, what can we expect? Well, we are going to expect the Rowdies team that is, you know, I don't want to see it Read the uh, hit the red panic uh, button yet, but they got to get a result. They got to get points. They were able to draw one on the road against Pittsburgh. They got to do it here at home. They got to keep adding points if they want to have a chance to go to the playoffs. All right. Meanwhile, FC Cincinnati, the last 14 matches without a loss. They are playing the best in the entire USL. Okay. Until then, though, we're going to send you back to this TV, Tampa Bay. Take you back to March 24th, Tampa Bay hosting the Bethlehem Steel, the first regular season match of the year. And when we resume, we'll have that for you in its entirety.
After a grueling battle in Pittsburgh, the Rowdies bring home a point. And tonight, Junior Flemings and company take on first place FC Cincinnati. It's coming up next. Extremely dark skies over downtown St. Pete as we get ready for kickoff. Looks like we are going to be ready for soccer as FC Cincinnati takes on the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Great to have you with us, everybody. Drew Felios along with former MLS and Liga MX star Eddie Rodriguez. It is a time where the Rowdies are looking for anything positive to build on. And Wednesday night, they got a huge goal from Junior Flemings. They did, Drew. And the best thing about that, it was the timing of the goal. Flemings came off the bench, and he was able to capitalize on that very last chance just at the last minute because it looked like the Rowdies were going to give up three points again. They were able to save one. And from now on, Drew, it's all about adding points, whether you're home or you're playing away. All right, meanwhile. FC Cincinnati just having a dream season. 14 matches without a loss. Also, they're going to move to MLS in 2019. And, Eddie, they have got a player, number five, Al Badawi, who is one of the best in the league. Yeah, he's been phenomenal. Talk about a player who can deliver at any given time. Watch him right here. Movement in the box. Takes a shot to the far post. And just like that, Nasmi Al Badawi puts the 1-0 over Atlanta FC. Yeah, part of a combo with Koenig and Ledesma. 30 goals on the season for this trio. They are a handful to deal with. Dominic Aduro and company certainly up to the task. He has had a fabulous year. Talk about the perfect defensive center mid for the Rowdies ever since he came in. He's been more of a quiet leader, but the first goal he had from about 30 out. Now, other than that, look at that. The way he tackles, the, the way he just owns that part of the field. He's been phenomenal for the Rowdies uh, defensive center mid. A duro, a solid combo with Joe Cole. Those two have really, really hit it off. Only 23 years old. Meanwhile, Al Badawi continues with nine goals, three assists to his credit in 2018. Rowdy's trying to knock off the top team in the USL East. Tampa Bay and FC Cincinnati. It's coming up next here from downtown St. Pete. Clearwater, home to Clearwater Beach. The number one beach in the U.S. is chosen by travelers on TripAdvisor. It's not just white sand and golf breezes. Beach is an attitude. It's the vibe of whatever brings you joy. Experience the American tropics on Florida's Gulf Coast. Visit stpclearwater.com. Love the beach. So about an hour after we were originally scheduled to kick off, finally looks like we're ready to play some soccer from Al Link Stadium. Tampa Bay Rowdies and FC Cincinnati. And as you see the visitors getting into it on the far side. Take a look at our formations. Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, a proud sponsor. And we will keep an eye on Al Badawi as we said in the pregame. 
Also, Fatai Aloshe, number 27, the midfielder, and Manu Ledesma wears number 45, 11 goals, 10 assists on the season. Newton is the goalkeeper. For the Tampa Bay Rowdies, Daniel Vega gets his first home start on a night when Tam McCandewiri says this is his final contest. The Rowdies want to play for their reserve. Joe Cole, Poku, part of that midfield, Aduro, the holding mid here tonight. Alan Koch and Neil Collins going at it for the second time. Last time Rowdies head up to Nippert Stadium earlier this season, FC Cincinnati got the result 2-0. The Rowdies hope to turn the favor in the other direction here tonight. 28 points for the Rowdies, 54 for FC Cincinnati. As you can see, we've had a steady downpour that has been going on since about 6 o'clock. But Eddie, these two sides look like they are finally ready to do battle. Well, right off the bat, Drew, we see the Rowdies coming up with a 3-5-2 system. They're looking to go forward, and we spoke to Neil Collins. He wants to go forward as early as he can and put a couple goals in the back of the net. You know, make sure they use, you know, the status of the home base home advantage against a great Cincinnati side who we know who can score a bunch of goals and they've proven it as you talk about Ledesma at front. Well Stefano Bonomo saw the injured staff for the Rowdies get a look there at Tariq Morad as he is ready to go for FC Cincinnati Gibson also got Boehner with the ankle he is out Richie Ryan the lower leg injury and I think you got to wonder if you're an FC Cincinnati fan, how will they respond to these types of conditions? How will the Rowdies respond as well for Rowdies fans? I guarantee it's much better to play in these conditions on a beautiful home pitch like this here at Allen Stadium than it is on the artificial surface up in Cincinnati. It is absolutely. And of course, the Rowdies are used to the surface. Now, conditions like this when it's wet, it really doesn't help anybody, especially a good team like the Rowdies who love to come out of the back. It's going to put defenders, it's going to put goalkeepers in check right off the bat. You cannot take your foot off the ball because as soon as you do that, the ball is going to roll away. The conditions are wet. And Vega, of course, a goalkeeper for the Rowdies and Newton. The Cincinnati goalkeeper, they have to be aware that when you take a shot on goal, that ball is going to skip right in front of you. Underway from downtown St. Pete. Tampa Bay Rowdies in the familiar green and gold. And FC Cincinnati in the visiting white. Well, select is the official soccer ball of the USL for the latest select products and special offers. Visit SelectSportAmerica.com. Receive free shipping on orders over $50. Ralph's mob in their seats, ready to go. Obviously, a match like tonight with the conditions. As Cincinnati getting right to it on the left side. Contact already in the box. And not the way Tampa Bay wanted to start. Right off the bat, penalty kick in favor of Cincinnati. Great ball into space, though. And you see Taku getting the first yellow of the game. It's a great ball into the box. He does the rest, though, covering the ball. Jimmy McLaughlin puts his body between him and Taku. You see great reception, comes back. I'm not sure there was enough contact from behind, especially being the first minute of this game. The referee thinks otherwise. And Emmanuel Ledesma to do the honors. So Ledesma. Will test Daniel Vega. Vega recently signed. The Argentinian with three saves in his debut Wednesday in Pittsburgh. Desma able to hit that corner and already a 1 0 lead for the visitors. Daniel Vega, the goalkeeper, had it. You could tell he wanted to have that one back. But Desma stutter step. By the time he hit the ball, Daniel Vega was right there, not too far off. Watch this, full extension, touches the ball with his left club. And just like that, Cincinnati goes up 1-0 early in this match. So it's the 12th goal of the season for Manu Ledesma. He's also got 10 assists. He could very well be on his way to MVP status 
here in the USL. And he has hit four game winners, and he's assisted on four game winners as well. When you look at the impact he has had on the Cincinnati side, it is just remarkable. Rowdy is pretty solid all time against FC Cincinnati, but they have never lost to this side, Eddie, here at home at Allen. Yeah, his production numbers, you know, they speak for themselves. But definitely, Emmanuel Ledesma, a clutch forward for FC Cincinnati. Take a look at the comparisons. How about 51 goals scored by the visiting side? Only 24 conceded. That's plus 27 goal differential. Just off the charts. Yeah, and the thing about Cincinnati, they have different players who can put the ball in the back of the net. We talked about Nasmi Albodawi in the pregame show. Another player with the ability to put the ball in the back of the net. And of course, Ledesma. They have players with a lot of experience. Marco Lahoud, an ex Miami FC from the NASL last year, a great midfielder. Teammate last year of Daniel Vega, the Argentine goalkeeper for the Rowdies. Afrim Taku, the Albanian, to put it in motion for Tampa Bay. It's a pretty nice ball. Yakite, just outside the six, heads this one out. And now Tampa Bay will work. Joe Cole, his first touch. Cole shifting around the 18. Trying to send one in. Lahoud was all over him and help coming that time. The whistle does blow, though, and it is against Tampa Bay when Sadi pleading his case. Yeah, when Sadi didn't like the the call. You can tell in that part of the field, Drew, where the water's accumulating. You can tell the ball is stopping right there, so that's something you got to keep your eye on it towards that left-hand side of that outfield part. That's where the water tends to stay, stagnate. And as we continue to see some of the rain coming down, that's something you want to keep an eye on throughout the game. Junior Flemings. Coming off that big game, tying goal on Wednesday. That's a good idea. Good delivery by Zach Portillos on the left flank. Now he's now trying to turn. Manzotti sending it out. Joe Cole. Cole, nice fancy footwork, takes the shot. And Newton able to dive on it for FC Cincinnati. Hey, Rowdy's fans, one of TV's best police dramas is coming to MOR at Chicago PD. It premieres Tuesday, September 25th at 10 p.m. Plus, you can catch Chicago PD Marathon Sundays in primetime on MOR starting September 30th. Chicago PD coming to MOR this fall. Little push and shove from behind the referee's side. Closing out to the action. He calls it on Tariq Barat. The Rowdy's center back. And you see now, Drew, that Cincinnati's got the score. They have the time. They're going to be happy and content with just keeping the ball. They're going to take their time and set pieces. And they're just going to try to control the tempo of this game. They we're able to capitalize on that penalty kick early in this first half. All set in motion right into the hands of Daniel Vega. Rowdy's coming off that 1-1 draw to Pittsburgh. They have not gotten three points since July 21st. That home match against Indy 11 has been a long time since Tampa Bay has had a victory, over a month. A little collision there, Junior Fleming's getting the better of it, now attacks from the right side. It'll be the first corner kick of the night for Tampa Bay, and all corner kicks for the Rowdies brought to you by Ashley Home Store. Great job by Junior Fleming's door. Didn't give up with that play. Stole the ball from the center back, tried to cross it, earned the first corner kick for the Rowdies in swinger. And the Newton on guard. The Rowdies keep this one on the ground. Want to possess much better tonight. Zach Portillos on the ground gives it a ride. Ball was humming, but the turf sort of slowed it down with all that water. You know, the USL's official Twitter feed keeps you up to date with news, live game updates, and highlights from around the league 24-7. Follow at USL 
on Twitter. You know, it's a good set piece of that corner kick, Drew, because you get the whole Cincinnati defense unaware that it's going to be a short corner kick set piece. You want to draw that defense out, and you saw Zach Portillo's trying his luck from 30 out. He's got to do a little better in that delivery, but however, you see all the entire Cincinnati defense getting out and providing space for the rowdy forward. Duro, high in the air. And now Cincinnati will turn. Fancy footwork from Ledesma, and given up. Tampa Bay attacking the other way. Poku kind of got lost between three white jerseys. And now this will be sent to the far side. Junior Fleming's very active, as he was on Wednesday night. That's definitely going to be a whistle. Yeah, he gets hit from behind, and this could be the first yellow for Fatai Alashi, referee having a chat, having a word with him. Yeah, Aloshe, the former San Jose Earthquake, made headlines as he exited that franchise. Very emotional player, and he's perhaps somebody that the Rowdies can get to tonight, exploit, get him out of his game just a bit. Yeah, he's definitely a player who's known for inducing his head from time to time, getting some of those yellow cards. So. If you're going to work on someone like that, force him to get a yellow before you know it, he's going to back off of those tackles that we talked about, especially those controversial tackles. So, and Drew, you and I talked about the mental aspect of this game as you see Junior Fleming's go down, no contact. Referee doesn't call it. Fleming's quickly to Joe Cole. Cole switches the point of attack now, and Mo Rod to Adoro. Rowdies. Be nice to see them possess a lot more here tonight than they did on Wednesday. I like their tempo, though. They came out with pretty good tempo, playing quicker out of the back, keeping the ball, but moving the ball quicker, though. Poku tries to come near side. Zach Portillos will run it down. Very wet field, obviously, here tonight. Rowdy's dealing with the conditions as they are. And you see, Drew, the quicker you can play side to side, switch your point of attack, try to get Cincinnati in transition, going from side to side, try to find those gaps in between, and then trying to find Poku, Joe Cole in the middle, Ginsadi on top. And of course, Junior Flemings as well, who's done a tremendous job trying to get open, trying to get the ball to his feet. Ashley home store corner kick here for Tampa Bay. Diakite, that big target. Trying to get position. Ball comes in. Diakite was there. Tried to elevate. Just went over his head. And now it'll be a throw in for the home side. Yeah, Taku has to do a better job delivering that corner kick. That ball has to be driven with the intention to find someone's head. As you mentioned, Drew, there's a couple of great targets like Poku. Diakite as well, who went forward. Now, good turn. Big time shot deflected. When Sadi with the drive that time. Poku trying to win it inside the 18. Fleming's left footed blast just to the right. Great turn by Sebastian Gensadi. And even a better shot. A laser right outside the box. Watch this great turn. One touch. Looks up. Let's it go right there. And the goalkeeper, Newton. Good job. He knew he couldn't get a hold of that ball. Just punch it out. Another Ashley Home Store corner. Junior Fleming's elevating, gets ahead on it. Poku sends it out, another shot by Hunter Gorski. And this one's just left the route. He's putting consistent pressure on this FC Cincinnati back line. Great job by Poku setting up Gorski, who was looking to one-timed it. Just kind of falling behind, but once again, they draw another corner kick. Third Ashley Home store corner kick here in the last minute. Business starting to pick up for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Now it's Cole, double teamed, able to split it, header set on, and Fleming's had it deflected right near the six, and the Rowdy's knocking on the door at the moment. Great job once again by Joe Cole, gets a short corner, takes two players on, crosses the ball, and Junior Fleming's wide open right there. He actually makes contact with Gonzati. I think Fleming's could have done better with that ball. He over-rotated a bit. 
Nonetheless, Drew, I like the intensity, how they're keeping the intensity going forward and trying to get something forward. A couple of good shots, a couple of corner kicks. You got to keep that pressure up. Well, you can watch highlights from every game of the 2018 season and stay up to date with news from across the USL. The league's official Facebook page, facebook.com slash USL soccer. Tremendous season it has been in the USL. The league continues to explode. FC Cincinnati right now, first place in the USL East. A 14-game unbeaten streak on the line here tonight. Their last loss was May 26th. Rowdy's trying to deal it to him here. Junior Flemings trying to position himself. Very physical, it's getting in the corner. And now a whistle comes out, and Flemings looked like he was pushed several times before responding, and the official called the response and at the original action. Yeah, you're right. Flemings get begin push. He's got to do a better job at selling that. You can see right there the defender, and now the. Come on. Wow. He went the other way. Of course, he sold it a little bit better. Big center back, big captain for Cincinnati. Barrett. That's one of those, Eddie, where you just say. Well, you got to call the first one, too. So you, exactly. You saw Fleming's got pushed a couple of times. But once again, you see the size difference. He's got to do a better job just, you know, fall forward, get the call. I like the intensity by the Rowdies, though. They came out with that pressure, knowing that they got to win. And that's how you got to play this game, Strew. The intensity, every minute of this game, you got you to keep up the intensity. You got to go forward, you know, because you got to win this game. Bottom line, from now on, it's all about keep adding points, but you're at home, you want to get three. 15th minute here at Outlink Stadium. Drew Felio, Seti Rodriguez, Heather Donnelly down on the field. A rainy night here in downtown St. Pete. We started a little over an hour after the original start time, but underway nonetheless. Rowdy's conceding one to a PK by Manu Ledesma in the second minute. Pace and tempo been very good so far for the home side. FC Cincinnati, though, trying to get rolling, and that is a clear foul as Michael LaHood, the former Miami FC, Joe Cole going to get booked here in the 15th, and that's his ninth yellow of the season. Yeah, you have to be careful of those cards. Your joke all because it's early in this game, only 15 in, and you see the difference here. Yeah, that's not a yellow, but you see Joe Cole's intention trying to get to the ball, and he's actually saying he got to the ball. Yeah, maybe a bit late, but there's no intention of him making contact with Ladu, Lahoud rather. This is where the routers need to pick it up, dude, right here. Men marking. You got to be close enough to touch the player. We know the importance and how good Ledesma is delivering this left foot in swinger into the box. You got to stay close with the players. Ledesma puts some air under it. Vega coming out and punches it out to Joe Cole. Rowdy's able to clear. Let's check in on the pitch with Heather. Well, Drew, just a, a little weather report from down here at field level. There's a pretty steady rain coming down. I wouldn't say that it's pouring, but it's just a steady rain, and the field is starting to get wetter and wetter. I, I don't see any puddles necessarily. The tarps did wonders for the field conditions here. And the ball is moving pretty well considering the circumstances, but I am seeing water starting to spray up on certain passes. There are areas that are wetter than others, so we'll see how the field conditions progress as the night goes on. Yeah, the guys. pitch is so wet, Heather. I hope you have your rain boots tonight, Heather. I, I do, I do. I am I am ready down here. I've got my rain gear, and I'm uh, ready to ride it out these 90 minutes. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, you definitely saw contact once again by the captain, Patty Barrett on Fleming's. And Fleming, uh, he needs to keep pushing that because twice he's got behind him. You need to force him to keep making that foul, and one of those he's going to get the call, especially this wet surface. Interception on the far side. Tampa Bay able to break up possession. From FC Cincinnati, it goes right back, though. Hey, Rowdy's fans, the next Tampa Bay Rowdy's home game, Saturday, September 15 versus Atlanta United FC2. Georgie Ristoff, Stefano Bonomo, and your Tampa Bay Rowdy's battle Atlanta United FC2 live on this TV Tampa Bay the broadcast home of the Tampa Bay Rowdies check your local listings or go to MORTV.com
Things settling down just a bit here. Bad giveaway, though, by Diakite. And now FC Cincinnati attacking. And Albadawi, not the guy you want to give it away to. That is a careless mistake. And against a side like this, as good as they are, you cannot make little mistakes like that. Absolutely, especially a mental mistake by Diakite. The wrong part of the field. As you mentioned, this isn't the time to give one up, especially against a great forward like Albadawi. He will punish you. Fortunately, he ran out of room there. Jimmy McLaughlin now for FC Cincinnati. The Cincinnati side, they have been road warriors this year. Seven, seven, one, and three away from Nippert Stadium. Five clean sheets among those, and a plus 10 goal differential when they are on the road. That shows you how good they are. But tonight, listen, no doubt they're a great team. No doubt they love to go on the road. Let's not forget, they play in a stadium that has AstroTurf, so I don't even think they like to play at home. They love to go on the road to get great results. Sign of a, a well-coached team and, and a pretty a, a team that is pretty disciplined. You see some of their numbers. They don't give up a lot of goals as you see the referee once again close enough to the play. Holding the foul or Joe Cole. Albadawi, nine goals this season, had a brace on Wednesday against Atlanta. Out of Raleigh, North Carolina, signed just back in January. What a find by Alan Koch. He just seems to know what he wants whenever he goes on that open market. Well, he definitely knows the players in this league, and, and when you pick up a player like that, you saw the two goals he scored against Atlanta. All he did, they left them open a yard, yard and a half, and he did the rest. Very clever player, especially going forward. Poku on the breakaway. Not seen Poku get into the scoring column yet as a Tampa Bay Rowdy. Junior Flemings now with some nice pace. Cole is with him in the 18. Flemings takes the shot. A hand on it by Newton, and it sails just left of the goal. Great job by Junior Flemings in that breakaway. He had Kinsati wide open, but what a tremendous effort inside the box. A little shake and bake, takes the shot with his left foot far post. And look at Newton on a full extension. That one was going to the back of the net, Drew. Absolutely had a chance. Ashley home store corner kick for the Rowdies. They've owned the corner edge tonight. Here, 21 minutes in. Ball sent far post now. Winds up at the feet of Adoro. Adoro sending one in. And Poku again involved. Kite comes to the rescue for the Rowdies as Poku will send another one in. This one nice and high. And still, Rowdies not able to really get through that final third. Yeah, is that uh, that last touch right there in the attacking third so elusive? A ball has to be driven. A little floater didn't quite get to. I think it was Tariq Murad who went forward for that header. Well, you know, we got some great Rowdies fans tonight here in the house, and we've also got them watching on TV all over the Tampa Bay area and beyond, all over the world, in fact. We got a big birthday shout out. Happy birthday to one of our best Rowdies fans, George Casteris, who is watching tonight in Tampa. George, happy birthday to you. And we hope we can deliver a big Rowdies win. Be a great birthday present, wouldn't it? Well, absolutely, Drew. I know you get excited when we call up some of the big Rowdy fans. Well, not one for you. Randy Scott, a big time Rowdies fan. So he's been such a big fan that when he was 12, he got to play in Tampa Stadium, put four in the back of the net at halftime. That's his claim to fame. <laughs> it's his birthday today. 37 years of age, a youngster. But nonetheless, a big Rowdies fan. Uh, George Casteris. We salute you here tonight. Rowdies trailing 1 0, 23rd minute. Eddie coming in. We were a little concerned about the Rowdies' pace given what 
went down in their last home match against North Carolina coming off a of Wednesday showing but I'll tell you what so far they have looked great they're quick to the ball pace has been tremendous and the chemistry the cohesion has been there they just need to finish well how dynamic they've been as you, you see poker right there having a chat with the ref did not like the call and it's one of those situations where you want to keep the intensity right here when that starts to die in a little bit Drew as a coach that's when you can start making some moves as you see once again Poku not having it with a ref trying to plead his case that's one of the things Neil Collins has done so well as you see once again he it's a little push from behind but not enough to call you can tell McLaughlin saw the well though that's what I was saying earlier on on Gensati. you read his lips what did I do what did I do well, it's the it's the two hands from behind that he call. There's contact, but then again, these are the pros, Drew. There's going to be contact all the time. Robin is racing, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Here's Ledesma now, the magician for FC Cincinnati sends one inside the 18. And Adi had it for a moment before the Rowdies defense was able to respond. Ledesma now in the corner. Trying to keep this one in, but perhaps in a corner kick for his side. Look at Ledesma, such great body control as he gets it out of there. Albadawi over there, and now number 20, McLaughlin, got a piece of it before it wound up in the hands of Vega. And that's what uh, Daniel Vega brings to the table. So much experience in the back. He's going to own that box, so anything around him, he's going to let you have the, the shots outside the box. But I like the fact that he comes out, he's going to dominate the area he's going to control the defenders and tell them where to go let's not forget the Raiders are playing with three in the back they're trying to attack as soon as they get the ball numbers up well on Wednesday night Rowdies were able to get one goal by Junior Flemings and that draw to Pittsburgh but after that goal that broke a 422 minute drought of no goals by the Rowdy side. They need to explode offensively. Tonight would be a great time to do it. Is this one going to be whistled again? A free Taku involved that time. And you saw in that goal, this is a great chance for the Rowdies right here. You got to have a good delivery, though. Well, there's Taku, the far post. You got to send the big guns on top, big bodies. Tariq Murad, Poku. That piece now, Taku on top of it. Midfielder out of Albania. Rowdy's set in the box. This one is long. It's going to sail over everybody, as you saw. Gorski trying to elevate. And the ball will be out of bounds. Yeah, he got under a little bit too much. He was trying to smack the ball with a little bit of spin, but he got under way too much. The ball, it's got to be a combination of a driven ball with spin. You want to invite the goalkeeper out. Giving the advantage to the forward. You just go in, climb the ladder, and tap it in with your head. Rowdy somehow managed a throw in. And you see on top of it now, Sack Portillos. Sent right back to him. Wensadi now approaching. Wensadi. A little bit of air under it. And there you see the chemistry, the cohesion just a little bit off for Tampa Bay and a sequence that we've seen many times this season. Well, it's a special night for Tam McCandleweary, and Heather Donnelly is on the pitch with one. Yeah, Drew, Rowdy's fans may have seen yesterday on social media Tam McCandleweary announcing that he will be retiring from professional soccer. Tonight is his last match as a Rowdy. Him saying that it's just the right time for him and his family for, for him to retire. He joined the team back in 2014, and he's made 99 appearances for Tampa Bay. So he's on the bench tonight. We'll see if he can make appearance number 100, if he can get subbed in. But either way, whether it's 99 or 100 appearances, he's definitely a legend for this club, guys. And we had a tremendous tribute piece to him, Heather, in our pregame show. Tam McCandleberry, 35 years old, 19 pro seasons. I would love to see him check in tonight hopefully that comes for the Rowdies as Gwensati sends it back out now Tampa Bay working with Taku this one gets deflected out and it will be 
A throw in for the Rowdies. Well, I have one better for you, Drew. I'd love to see him come into the game and then put the game winner in the back of the net. We know he's got the ability to go forward on corner kicks, set pieces. You're, not, you're right, what a career he's had, not only for the Rowdies. Oh, good here. pass stuck through here. Rowdies attacking with Cole. Cole wanted contact that time. And it should be another Rowdies corner kick here coming up, brought to you by Ashley Homestore. Again, Tampa Bay very close. Yeah, just great idea by Gonzati playing the ball back. Joe Cole just a bit late. But the idea is there, you talk about once again that attacking third right there. The pass has to be a little bit better. The time in overall. The run, the pass, the delivery. Ball's got some spin on it. Oh, once more. And Cincinnati does such a good job as Flemings winds up and sends it over the crossbar at that time. But it's not just the goalie, Newton. It is that back line. Forrest Lasso, Blake Smith, Barrett, and Hoyt. They are so stingy back there. Junior Flemings sporting that new haircut. Well, cool off with Tampa Bay's hottest movie hits 24 hours a day on this TV, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's first premier broadcast movie channel featuring films from world-famous MGM Library. Now playing for you all day, all night. This TV, Tampa Bay, the official broadcast home of your Tampa Bay Rowdies. Tie up the shoes here on this wet field tonight. In case you're just joining us, we began more than an hour past our original start time of 7.30. Eddie, we've seen rain all season long, but nothing quite like the monsoon that we saw at about 6.30 tonight. It was horrendous down here. Yeah, definitely, you know, a lot of water that came down, and we got to give a shout-out to the grounds uh, keepers here at Outlang Stadium. They did a great job with the tarp, because if not, Drew, there's no way they wouldn't be able to play this game. I mean, the amount of water that came down. Now Ledesma slowing things up. Rowdy's very focused, keeping him marked tightly. Hoyt, Justin Hoyt out of London, England. With it right now for FC. Great job by the Rowdy, just keeping that shape in the back. You see how everybody's tucked in. Other than the goal, Drew, not many chances for FC Cincinnati. Here's what it looked like earlier tonight. This is about 6.30, the tarp on the field. There's absolutely nobody in the stadium. And, you know, you couldn't even see outside our booth. That's how bad the rain was coming down. And that's what I was saying. I mean, you take that tarp off and forget it. I mean, you would have two feet of water there. There's no way that ball would be rolling right now. Not often, Drew, do you get to see an entire soccer field covered. 120 by 80, plus or minus a few yards here and there. It's pretty impressive. Rowdy's possessing here in the 31st minute. Again, they conceded in the second minute. Penalty kick by Manu Ledesma, the difference in this match. And outside of that, Rowdy's had the better. Uh, the team right now in first place in the USL East. The Rowdies have only had one win, though, in their last eight matches. They're desperate for three points here tonight. Tampa Bay now keeping it on the ground. Tremendous pass. Cole goes left side, and now at the feet of Portillos. He tries to send it top of the 18, and it's intercepted. Dekite. Challenge and again, it just you get the feel tonight, Eddie. That first place in the USL East, they're getting a lot of the benefit of the doubt here so far. Take a look at what Cincinnati has done this season. Last 14 matches, 11 multiple goal games, 31 goals over two per contest. Yeah, you're right. Every time one of the forwards, where there's Ledesma uh, or I would Dobby check for the ball. They draw that foul, and it's almost systematically that they fall. So the Rowdies have to do a better job that, you know, you want to stay close on the marking, but just not to draw that foul. Here's Justin Hoyt. We'll take a look at some out-of-town scores. Indy 11, 
One one draw with Atlanta. Look at more scores in a moment. Charleston and New York. High scoring. Eight goals in that match. And it's a draw. North Carolina. They're getting better and better. They get the better of Charlotte tonight. Six to two. North Carolina FC, they are no joke. Listen, we talked about the ability of Colin Clark, the Irish international coach for NCFC, Drew. You know, just just to, you know, last year they were in the NASL, and now they came to the USL and slowly getting better. They're just going on a tear. That team is playing well, scoring goals and winning games in that order as well. Saw Louisville too, six nothing over Richmond. Don't count them out just yet. All the attention on FC Cincinnati this year. Louisville City still keeping things together. What an up and down year they've had. Here's Junior now back out. Maduro handles it well. This one set nice and high near the goal, and Newton able to reel it in just in front of Joe Cole. Yeah, once again, too much under by Taku. That ball needs to be driven. An early ball. Great job by Fleming's though. Checking to the ball. Plays the ball back to Joe Cole. The movement not enough. The ball in the middle has been great. The delivery in the attack in third, not so much. You got to take your time and has to be a lot more precise. Cincinnati making the move to MLS in 2019 and when that happens Eddie you have a lot of great athletes that are not just playing but they're competing for next season and that raises the level of play because these players want a spot on that side in 2019 this one's set long now and here's Manzati Sebastian gives it a ride with the left foot but it is well to the left. Kick now for Evan Newton. As you mentioned, Drew, some of these uh, Cincinnati FC players are looking to make an impression on the coaching staff for the MLS franchise and trying to get a job, trying to get a contract with them. Unfortunately, that's not always the case. They only take about you know, 30, 35, 40 percent, maybe. It all depends on the coaching staff, of course, who they want to keep. But you know, when you talk about some of the players they have, like Emmanuel Ledesma, of course, you want to take him. You know, Abu Dhabi, you want to take in, you know, some of the center backs, like even the goalkeeper Newton. Some of the big stars, you do want to reward them and, uh, you know, let them go MLS as well. Just a lot of things that go into it. The structure of contracts is different. Now you got to, uh, in the MLS, you're actually signing a contract with the league and now with the club, which is totally different. And, and a lot of the things that go into that aspect of the business. Kite now gives it a ride. Now he's looking to a few more chances here before an omission. Neil Collins, very vocal this week, talking about his team and their preparation for this key match. Rowdy's trying to get a good one in. Joe Cole again there. Fleming's winding up. Rowdy's trying to stay with it. Again, that back line just so tough to move. Ganging up just outside the six and round. He's trying to find a way to blast one through. Yeah, but that's exactly what you want to do. You want to stay focused. You want to keep going forward. Once again, Taku with a cross looking for Joe Cole near post. Plays it again for Flemings. And just like that, he gets called for an offside. But just the fact that he's playing as a right fullback on the right side, and look how far he is. That's just an outstanding job by him going up, trying to get some crosses in. Now, let's not forget that you got to get back defensively. So it's a huge sacrifice going up, getting some crosses, and then having to come back to cover your men. Right now, Tampa Bay Rowdies with a 55 to 45 percent edge in possession. So they're getting that done. Just waiting for that goal to come here at home. And there's another one. Every time a FC Cincinnati player goes down, the official quick to blow the whistle. And that's exactly what Gonzati was talking about. Sebastian Gonzati, 
He's talking about the captain. Every time you touch him, he falls down. Patty Barrett, and watch here. Yeah, there's a little bit of contact, but he does the rest by diving. Look at Gonzadi with a <laughs> with a Bradway interpretation of uh, that foul. Because if a player slows up and you're right behind him, of course you're going to have to put your hands on his back, right? And, and that's a way to draw the foul, exactly the way you called it, knowing that he's coming full speed. If you slow yourself down and just hit the brakes right there, he's going to have to make contact with you. That's when you fall forward again, and that's when you sell the foul. Flemings trying to intercept up top. Be thrown on the far side for the visitors. Good job by Flemings coming back and putting pressure, though. Most of the time, forwards just kind of wait for the ball on top, and he's been proactive coming back, checking to the ball, trying to get the ball at his feet. Justin Hoyt. A little bit of space to work with. Calmly sending one in Diakite. Over to Aduro. Well played by Pape. This is when the Rowdies have to push the lines right now. You want to try to get the equalizer before you go. Through the halftime intermission. Oh, definitely fouled. The referee called it. for the Barbasol. And another set piece coming up here for Cincinnati. Dominic Maduro, the youngster, goes over to have a word. And Abadawi, the midfielder, with nine goals to his credit involved at the moment. Yeah, but, you know, Dominic Aduro has a great point, though. He's talking about, well, what about the one before that? We always talk about it in the game. If you call the first one, the second one, never, and it doesn't happen. So, as a referee, you got to be close enough where you call the first one. That way, you can keep both teams checked. Emmanuel Ledesma on top of it. Already with a golden knight. Ledesma sending one far. Rowdies. Taku trying to get on top of it. And deflected out. Again, good job by the Rowdies defense. Poku playing it forward to Cole. Flemings running forward. Rowdies with some numbers. This one sent in. Service to Cole. Cole tried for the header. Right back, though. Portillo's able to win it. Poku the shot. And that one is to the left as well. It's a great job by the Rowdies, though, keeping the pressure up. You see Poku. Fleming's definitely deflected by one of the defenders. Poku loops out. Let's it go right there. Off of Ledesma for a corner kick. This is that pressure I was talking about, Drew. You got to keep pressing to the last whistle. Another Ashley home store corner. Rowdies. And a downpour here tonight. Trying to keep on the pressure. Joe Cole. Taku. Taku trying to service one. This one will sail over everybody. And another good Rowdies possession. Able to move that Cincinnati defense just unable to break through again you got to figure it's coming it's coming just stay with the plan yeah and that's when you have to be patient drew you got to keep going at it you gotta you know keep going forward keep making those diagonal runs those one twos outside the box and anywhere around the 18 you got to let it go you got to crack it Joe Cole calmly takes it away. See Junior Flemings just sort of waiting in the wings here tonight. 42nd minute. Here's Poku. Poku! Another blast off the feet of Blake Smith. Flemings on the ground trying to keep it alive. Aduro flying in. And now one by Guinsani. Guinsani contact in the box. Waiting for a call. And that is one that you would think would come with everything the Rowdies have been through with the officiating tonight. Well, you can tell the whole fan section erupts because if you're going to call the first one, you better call that one, and he doesn't. He saw definitely contact in the box. Service this time. 
And Zadi waiting for it. And Sebastian upset at the moment. And there is contact to Poku. Better be careful here. But once again, you see Odura right here. There's contact there. Gonzadi goes to the side. Then right right there. there. A shot once again to the side. There's definitely contact. The referee doesn't call it. And that's exactly what Joe Cole is talking about. Look at your linesman because at some point he raised the flag. Now Poku gets the yellow. Now this is where Eddie. Rowdies cannot let emotions get the best of them. Remember, they've been dealt three red cards here at home this year. And once again, you see there's definitely contact by Poku, but look at Ledesma's weight of selling this. I mean, there's contact, and of course, he dove three times. And you see Poku, that's one of the disadvantages of having a bigger frame like Poku. When he makes contact with someone, it's going to look even worse. Yeah, remember earlier this year, Leon Taylor, a red card. Also Flemings. Had Junior Flemings and Marcel Schaefer, a red card earlier this season. Red cards have certainly come at the worst times for the Rowdies. Yeah, that's the last thing we need here tonight. So I think if you're Joe Cole, got to settle the lads down. And let's take one more look at the non-call where the Rowdies, you'd think, we're due for one here. It looked like there was clearly contact. Yeah, see Oduro, that right there could have been a call, but he's definitely, look his left arm, how he pushes Gonzadi right there. Wow. And see both players laying on the left side, so it tells you that his momentum took him to the left side. So is it a call or not? Are you going to call something this late? Well, he called it in the first two minutes of the game. And pretty much the only chance Cincinnati has had. They haven't had a shot since. That's what Neil Collins says. Or means when he says that we have not gotten a break this year. It's plays like that, moments like that. Now the 45th minute. We'll wait on extra time as soon as we get it. We'll let you know. Daniel Vega not very busy here tonight outside of the early PK. Yeah, not at all. If you take away the, the PK in the second minute of the game, Daniel Vega really hasn't had anything to do this game. Four minutes of extra time coming your way. Look out, here comes Abadawi. Great job by Zach Portillos. Look at that run he made. 30 yard run just to win the ball again. And that's that tenacity that I was talking about. The Rowdies are playing with a little more that chip in their shoulder today. I mean, it's a 45th minute and they're still running. Great job by Flemings. Blake Smith had his pocket picked. And now Junior Flemings with Poku. Sense of urgency on the rowdy side right now. Joe Cole with numbers pushing forward. Over to Portillos from the left side. Zach will service one in. Flemings gets airborne again. And contact was made. The hand check is going to be called. Yeah, he gets called from the push. And what happened is the defender, Brett, was backing, up, backing into him. So you push them a little bit. That's when you got to be clever enough to take a step back and then take a step forward and draw the foul. That's where experience comes in from some of those forwards. You see like this when the way they sell it. And not that you want to dive in the back in the box, but if there's enough contact, you got to get one of those calls. Certainly been an exciting first half of soccer. And he's still waiting to light up the scoreboard. Solid pass made that time to Quinsani. Junior Flemings tries to get through. The goalie comes up. Newton makes contact on Junior. And Cincinnati out of danger. How about that ball by Joe Cole, though? Talk about different class. Just outstanding ball into space. Fleming's just a bit late. Great chance by the Rowdies. Almost able to capitalize. Junior trying to turn once again. Tries to squeeze the pass through. And you see right now as we near halftime, let's take one more look. Fleming's, what a ball by Cole. You see that he beat 
Three defenders with that ball. Great job by Newton coming out, though, because had he stayed back, Flemings would have been one on one with him. That's how close the Rowdies are. Drew, that close. As you see once again, Fernando Adi drawing the foul or trying to draw the foul. Rowdies trying for one more chance here before halftime. Rowdies have thrown everything including the kitchen sink in Cincinnati so far. Still looking for a goal, though. Here's the shot, and it's blasted just about a foot high. Oh. I think there was contact in the box, and the first one had it fallen right around the 18. And then that's Kinsati with a great turn, looking to, for that far post. And if I'm not mistaken, it might have hit the crossbar on the way up. Sebastian Kinsati, great movement. From Montevideo, Uruguay. He's been so active this first half, Drew. Former New York Cosmos never seen him play this aggressive as he has in this first half. An aggressive. Another one of the New York Cosmos players who play for Giovanni Salvaresi now, the coach for the Portland Timbers. Justin Hoyt will dribble this out. FC Cincinnati content to go to the locker room with a 1-0 lead over your Tampa Bay Rowdies. Rowdies, though, played very aggressive in the first half. Chance after chance, still yet to bury one. Let's check in with Heather, who is with Neil Collins. Thank you, Drew. Coach, obviously this one started out not the way you would have wanted, but you haven't been short for chances since then. What do you think of the intensity that your team came out with in this one? Yeah, look, the lads are playing fantastic. Um, it's as if everything's against us. You know, the world's against us, and we're just going to keep fighting in the second half. If we fight the way we've done there, we're bound to get a break because everything can't keep going against us the way it is right now. Yeah, FC Cincinnati, obviously a very dominant team on a 14-game unbeaten streak. What's it going to take to break that streak tonight? Uh, we're just going to need to take one of our chances that we've created. We're going to need to rise above some of the play acting that we've been um, subjected to, and hopefully we can come out and chop in the, on top and uh, some justice will win out. All right, thanks, Coach. Rise above the message from head coach Neil Collins. Guys. Rowdy's dealing with the elements on and off the pitch. Trailing 1-0 to FC Cincinnati with halftime festivities coming up right after this. Across Florida, we're listening to customers like you, and we're working hard to build the brighter energy future you and your family deserve. That's why we're making smart investments in the grid to improve reliability and prevent outages to use more clean, renewable energy like solar, and to give you better control over your energy use today and in the years ahead. We're Duke Energy, and we're building a smarter energy future for you. This is St. Pete Clearwater, home to 35 miles of white sand bliss. But it's more than emerald surf and gulf breezes. The beach is an attitude. It's the vibe of life, nature, art, music, or whatever brings you joy. Experience the American tropics on Florida's Gulf Coast in St. Pete Clearwater. Love the beach. If you're new in town and working on your dreams, and you don't know what you need, we got the perfect plan for you. My blue, my blue. We are here, we're here for you.
One nil to score at the half. Tampa Bay Rowdies trying to dig themselves out of a slight hole to FC Cincinnati after conceding in the second minute. Rowdy's been trying to play uphill ever since. Great to have you with us, everybody. Drew Felios alongside the former Liga MX and MLS star Eddie Rodriguez. Rowdy's gave up that early goal. After that, Eddie, everything seemed to be good on the Tampa Bay side. Yeah, not the way they designed the start of this game, but you know what? They played pretty good. You know, the way they come out of the back, they're pushing forward. I love the fact they're playing three in the back, so they're trying to get numbers up. And just Neil Collins said it perfectly. Look, we have everything against us, but you know what? We're going to continue. We're going to race above that, and we're going to manage to win this game somehow. All right, let's take a look at some of those highlights after one half of play. This game started fast and furious as the team that is in first place right now in the East. You saw the foul right there. Jimmy McLaughlin going down. The card issued to Taku and buried by Manu Ledesma right past Vega. Gave FC Cincinnati the 1-0 lead. And then after that, Rowdy's tightened up and Vega and company played really well. Yeah, you see that great delivery uh, by Ledesma. Once again, Fleming's going one-on-one, -on -one, takes a shot to the far post. And just like that, Eva Newton gets a hand on that. That could have gone to the back of the net. Zach Portillo starting another run. Flemings, look how the players are sliding along that slick surface with the water coming up. Joe Cole, a great ball there. Evan Newton, the goalkeeper, comes out. Outstanding ball by Joe Cole. Just like that, Flemings just a little bit off. Newton does a great job coming back, and he saves the Cincinnati team. Technia Logistics halftime stats. You know, the number I want to look at is corner kicks because the Rowdies have owned it. Also, shots as well, Eddie. Remember, this team's in first place in the East. Well, that tells you right there the amount of chances they've had, not only on corner kicks, set pieces as well. So at one point, you got to take care of those and you got to put one in the back of the net. Yeah, another number that stands out. Look at the fouls 13 to 5. The Rowdies whistled for more than double, almost three times the amount that FC Cincinnati has earned. Much more coming up from Al Lang Stadium. Little delayed tonight, but we're at the half. Stay with us. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, we want you to eat better and feel better with smoothies made from better for you ingredients and food crafted with the bold flavors you love, like our Chipotle Chicken Club flatbread with grilled chicken, bacon, pepper jack, and chipotle mayo or our island green smoothie with fresh kale and spinach, banana, mango, and pineapple. Life's too good to settle for anything less. Chipotle Chicken Club and Island Green Smoothie at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Eat better, feel better. Florida Print Solutions is St. Petersburg's leader for the best quality, service, marketing, and printing solutions for your business, always with free pickup and delivery. At Florida Print Solutions, we stand for our community. Superior product quality, effective business solutions, and of course, we stand for printing. Make your next call to Florida Print Solutions and take your business image to the next level. Florida Print Solutions is an official sponsor of the Tampa Bay Rowdies. In the Tampa Bay area, the weather can change in an instant. Especially during storm season, it pays to stay on top of it. That's what makes the free TVO weather app so indispensable. You can track approaching storms with animated radar that zooms to your location. And you can click on the future radar button to see where the weather is heading. Don't get caught in the rain. Download TBO Weather today. Go to tbo.com slash weather to get started. Our next home game broadcast is on Saturday, September 15th, as the Rowdies host Atlanta United 2. Our pregame show starts at 7 and kickoff is set for 7.30 here at Al Lang Stadium. One player to keep an eye on in that match is Atlanta United 2's leading scorer, John Gallagher. The Irish forward, who's on loan from Atlanta's first team, has six goals and one assist on the season. 
This will be the second time the Rowdies will host Atlanta United 2 this season, with the first meeting ending in a scoreless draw back on June 2nd. Be sure to tune into This TV Tampa Bay on Saturday, September 15th, as the Rowdies host Atlanta United 2. Now, here's Drew Felios with USL News and Notes. Thank you so much, Heather Donnelly, Tampa Bay Rowdies. Right now on the outside looking in, the playoff picture, Ottawa Fury have got that last spot. FC Cincinnati atop the USL East, Louisville City, Pittsburgh, Charleston in that top four. Scores from around the league, a 1-1 draw, Atlanta and Indy, Charleston and New York the same, but eight goals between the two sides in that contest. Same thing with North Carolina FC and Charlotte Independence, but North Carolina getting the better of that matchup. Penn FC 2-0 over Ottawa, Louisville City 6-0 over Richmond, and Bethlehem 1-0 at the half over Nashville. Take a look at our storylines. How about the Charlotte Independence? A class move. $25,000 donation to McKenna Woodhead, a Charlotte area youth soccer player severely injured in a boating ac accident. Her hashtag, McKenna Strong. All proceeds from the match Wednesday night went to her cause. Rochester Rhinos approved for USL Division Three for the 2020 season and that golden boot watch certainly heating up Ennevoldson, Lancaster, and Langstorff. It's time now for all the best action last week in the USL. with his second. Slides it across, Michael Seaton. Seaton in on goal, Michael Seaton, he's at the brace. Ledesma right at the edge of the 18, takes a shot, and Manu Ledesma does it again. Now Spees gives it a go, oh. and Spees finds the back oh. of the net. Game of one upsmanship from the Indy 11 this season. Rebound comes out though, and it's stuck right back in. And guess who, Solomon Asante, Chance now for it, St. Louis! Long overdue goal for Corey Herzog. Here's Carl Howarth, and the shot, and it is 1-0 Ottawa Fury FC. Rizal is aimed to strike, it hits oh. the frame of the goal and goes in. Laid off to the path to Barry, he's onside, and he fires it home! And it'll be Gordon to strike with his right boot, hits it and puts it in the back of the net. To Velasquez, he'll take a crack through distance, and a goal! Chandler Hoffman redirects it for the goal. Here's another opportunity. Dixon shot and a score. Back to Corbin Bone. Bone inside of the 18. Buries it in the back of the net. So Belmar. Now into the area across the Belmar. Losing his defender, Belmar. Surely Blackwood gets the goal. Great save by Kendall McIntosh. Shot getting a piece of it. What a save. Great stop by Dykstra. Oh, what a save by Vaughn Williams. Cardoni with an impressive save. A brilliant save. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, we want you to eat better and feel better with smoothies made from better for you ingredients and food crafted with the bold flavors you love. Like our Chipotle Chicken Club flatbread with grilled chicken, bacon, pepper jack, and chipotle mayo. Or our Island Green Smoothie with fresh kale and spinach, banana, mango, and pineapple. Life's too good to settle for anything less. Chipotle Chicken Club and Island Green Smoothie at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Eat better, feel better. Florida Print Solutions is St. Petersburg's leader for the best quality, service, marketing, and printing solutions for your business, always with free pickup and delivery. At Florida Print Solutions, we stand for our community. Superior product quality, effective business solutions, and of course, we stand for printing. Make your next call to Florida Print Solutions and take your business image to the next level. Florida Print Solutions is an official sponsor of the Tampa Bay Rowdies. 
In the Tampa Bay area, the weather can change in an instant. Especially during storm season, it pays to stay on top of it. That's what makes the free TVO weather app so indispensable. You can track approaching storms with animated radar that zooms to your location. And you can click on the future radar button to see where the weather is heading. Don't get caught in the rain. Download TBO Weather today. Go to tbo.com slash weather to get started. Junior Flemings and the Tampa Bay Rowdies so close to equalizing late in that first half, but unable to do so. Trailing 1-0 as we head into the second half play. Drew Felios with Eddie Rodriguez, Heather Donnelly doing a great job weathering the elements and our entire crew throughout what was a little over an hour weather delay. And, you know, no matter what the conditions are, Ralph's mob is certainly going to show up, and the Rowdies have certainly shown up here tonight. I love the effort so far. Yeah, they're definitely, you know, faithful up in the stance. And, you know, the effort from the Routers has been just tremendous tonight. They came out swinging. Uh, you can tell they want to win. I mean, unexpectedly, of course, they gave up that early penalty kick, not the way they planned it. But Neil Collins has done a great job throughout the weeks just preparing this team, trying to get the best 11 out there, trying to go forward and get some goals. At the end of the day, that's what this game's about. And you can tell they're that close. You saw that great ball by Joe Cole and Flemings just a little bit off, but they're going to continue bringing it. Well, Coach Collins did say that, you know, the team hit a little bit of a low point a couple weeks ago at home in that North Carolina match when it was late, last 10, 15 minutes, they were gassed, not getting many chances. And, Eddie, it's something that they kind of used to motivate them over the past few weeks, and, you know, certainly... Sometimes to, to go forward, you got to take a few steps back. This Rowdy's team has had to do that a few times this well, year. Well, Drew, and as a coach, that's what you do. You want to use that to motivate your team. You can bring sure. that and say, guys, remember what you felt like in the last 20 minutes. Remember what it felt like to give that game away in the last 10 minutes of the game. Use that to fuel your players during the week to give more and to become better. Poku starts things off for the Rowdies, taking it through two different white jerseys and finally getting a whistle. He was at odds with our head referee throughout the entire first half. And he is a big body Poku midfielder from Ghana. Drew Felio, Eddie Rodriguez, Heather Donnelly. You're watching Tampa Bay Rowdy Soccer on this TV, Tampa Bay. See if the Rowdies can start fast here in the second half. Junior Flemings gets ahead on it, but right into the hands of Newton. You know, the USL will surpass 2 million in total attendance this week, maintaining a record pace in the stands for the league's modern era. The league and its teams would like to thank you, the fans, for the rising support you've provided over the course of this season as we head toward the 2018 USL Cup playoffs. Shattering attendance marks. And how about this FC Cincinnati side? Averaging... Over 25,000 at Nippert Stadium. They had 27,000 on August 18th when they were hosting Charleston, one of the, the top attendance teams. And Tampa Bay Rowdies also amongst the best in the league year in and year out. What a late call. Fernando Adi gets a call late, and Joe Cole cannot believe it. You can tell his expression like that happened two minutes ago. And there's actually... A little bit of, oh, there's no contact there. Just, I was going to say a little bit, but no. Taku went for the ball, won the ball. The ball went out wide. Once again, they'll keep an eye on Ledesma. His delivery has been lethal without a left foot. In swinger. Got to stay man tight with the players in the box. Ledesma always so dangerous. Sends this one far. Vega will punch it out. It'll be a throw in now for the visitors with 54 points coming in. Daniel Vega, his first home start. Conceded the second minute of that PK, but it's been pretty good. 
Coach Collins says that he's a competitor. He makes us better. That's why we had to sign him. Oh, absolutely. You know, and, and any chance as a coach, anytime you get a chance to bring a player that's going to make your team better, by all means, he's going to bring that intensity to the training ground, and of course, he's going to make you better in games. Look at this, Joe Cole, all by himself, far post. Rowdy's getting numbers forward. Fleming's tripped up, staying with it. Tampa Bay. And again, it was Wensadi who's been in the right spot several times tonight. Poku trying to keep things alive. But possession lost momentarily. And Sebastian Gensadi has been on. He's been so active throughout the game. Another great chance, another great breakaway for him. Try to play the through ball. You see him here taking two players on. Little ball right there for Flemings in the box. Good execution by Lasso, the defender from Cincinnati. Right place, right time. Just stuck his leg out. As Flemings was about to pull the trigger with his left foot. At some point, Drew, Neil Collins is going to have to make some subs. You cannot keep the intensity for 90 minutes without having, you know, make a couple of subs and bring some fresh legs. Switch to the point of attack now. This is Taku. Taku sending one in low on the ground. Junior Flemings tries to collect it. Heads back out. Slides it back in. Zach Portillos is there. More contact. How is that not a whistle? Great job by Flemings. So watch his little back heel right there. Chicky little flap back heel. And Ledesma right there. With the shoulder contact. And then he goes at Portillos. A few words for Zach that time. Zach saying, hey, you got to keep quiet. This is my house. Absolutely. It's one of those things that are going to happen during the game. You're going to have those confrontations. Little trash talking one on one, Drew. The referee yeah. finally giving the yellow to a Cincinnati defender. I couldn't tell if he was Abu Dhabi. Blake Smith. It is Blake Smith who gets booked. You see the challenge here? Oh, yeah, you definitely see the high kick right there. Blake Smith gets the yellow. Good call by the referee. Let's quickly send it down to Heather. Heather, what have you got? Drew, you guys were talking at the start of this half about Ralph's mob and how they've shown out in force, rain or shine. They definitely are out in force, and so are the FC Cincinnati fans. They have traveled here to Al Lang Stadium. This is their fourth time. And their fans always seem to travel very. Arturo with the big shot and a great save by Newton. Sorry, Heather. Continue. <laughs> no worries. Wow. Uh, some great action going on out on the field. Yeah, FC Cincinnati fans, they always seem to travel well. And they've got uh, a contingent up at Al, Al Lang Stadium up in the stands. Rain or shine, both both teams have fans here to, uh, to support them. Guys. Dominic Arturo unleashes the demons from 35 out. Just a line drive. Keeper Newton somehow got a hold of that one. Rowdy's again able to pull Newton out. A little bit of hesitation, Gorski. And reset. Gonsadi. Gonsadi now with the turn. Slides it out. Diakite. Can he service one in? He does. Needed to be in the air. Was on the ground. And it's won by McLaughlin. Diakite with a great run. Though that delivery has to be either near post or far post, but you got to drive it. Hey, Rowdy's fans, one of TV's best police dramas is coming to MOR. Chicago PD premieres Tuesday, September 25th, 10 p.m. Plus, you can catch Chicago PD Marathon Sundays in primetime on MOR starting September 30th. Chicago PD coming to MOR this fall. Dominic Aduro, after that missile, gets it forward to Poku. Poku sliding it ahead for Flemings. Flemings with a tough angle went far post. And a little bit wide on the delivery. I will say this. Eddie, I've had a chance to do every single one of these matches this year with you. 
I have never seen a sense of urgency by the Rowdy side like we've seen tonight. Once again, look at this great shot. Oh, keeper side at the very last minute. Newton with a full out dive, and Oduro could have been the hero there. Great job. But you're right, Drew. The intensity of this game has been so much better. The fact that they started from minute one and they kept that intensity up. That's the most uh, amazing thing about it. It's easy to keep up the intensity for five, ten minutes, but to be able to do it throughout the whole game, that's why I say at some point Neil Collins is going to have to go to his bench if you want to keep that intensity up high. So much incentive tonight playing the top team in the USL East and then one of the most popular teammates, Tam McCandaweary. His final game is the Tampa Bay Rowdy. So much to play for. Hey, we invite you to get an inside look at life on and off the pitch. From a player's perspective, every Wednesday evening in the latest edition of From the Pitch on USLsoccer.com. It's From the Pitch on USLsoccer.com. Great movement from the back for the Rowdies, just keeping the ball. Trying to find those gaps as they continue to go forward. Now Poku. Trying to work his way. Do that. You see Cincinnati defense loses it. And the visitors are about to make their first substitution of the evening. Maduro doing a great job tonight. Holding down the biggest threats on the visiting side. But I'll tell you what, they are so tough to keep in check for 90 minutes. Albadawi that time getting loose. And a substitution is Kenny Walker is going to check in. Midfielder. And he is going to replace Fatai Aloche, the former San Jose Earthquake. And all substitutes tonight brought to you by k -Pock Marketing. K-Pak Marketing, another proud sponsor of your Tampa Bay Rivals. I'm going to tell you, Futai Alasher was pretty active for this FC Cincinnati in the midfield. So now with Kenny Walker coming in, he's going to have to keep up that intensity defensively as well. As the Rowdies continue to go forward and use that gap, that space behind them. Comes Walker. Fresh legs in the midfield. I think visiting side certainly going to need that here at the moment in the 56th minute. Brownies again. Ledesma with that left foot and swinger. This is a good ball, and Vega gets to it first. Here's a shot taken. It's going to go way high as Jimmy McLaughlin tried to turn and just blasted it off frame. Yeah, Jimmy got a hold of that one. Still hasn't landed. Now the first sub for the Rowdies. It's going to be Michael Nanchoff. And Nanchoff will replace Joe Cole. K-Pak marketing. Once again, you're Sponsor for all substitutes tonight as Nanchoff enters, and I think Cole played great. The veteran, though, also played Wednesday. Eddie, he needs a blow. No, absolutely, and I think he understands that also. Last time, Michael Nanchoff came off the bench. He did a great job. He kept the tempo up. He had a couple of good chances. Just his distribution. Let's see this dangerous in the back here. Digite getting shoved several times in the back. By Fernando Adi. Yeah, that's the worst part of the field right there. You see how easy the grass just pops up. Good job by Papi Diakita, though, holding the ball. Swing one, Michael Nanchop going forward. Keep the ball, he's got fresh legs. Full tank of oxygen. Go forward. You gotta, you gotta risk something, Drew. You gotta go ahead. Gamble a little bit going forward. Manchoff can't collect. 
Michael Nanchoff does have one goal this season, two yellow cards, had six assists last year, has not gotten near that mark in 2018. Goals aren't coming. The assists obviously aren't coming as well. Right now, the Rowdies have scored 31 goals on the air. They've conceded 35 times. And now a lot of space to work with for our visitors. McLaughlin slides it left. Albadawi. Rowdies giving up a little bit of room here. Bay slowly pushing numbers forward with Hunter Gorski. Now you're starting to see, Drew, how this game is going to open up. You're going to see that big lake in the middle. Both teams are going forward. So now it's not going to be as tight. The Rowdies get the ball, they want to counter. FC Cincinnati get the ball, they want to go at the attack. So at the same time, you want to freeze the middle. You want to keep the ball, possess the ball in the middle. Go side to side before you go forward when you're trying to get that penetrating ball that is so elusive. And you do have players who can get it done like Flemings. There's Poku now starting to run for the Rowdies. Mansadi, center circle. Now they move it to the far side. 59th minute. The Rowdies have outshot FC Cincinnati by a ton here, but. Another careless giveaway in the center circle. And McLaughlin controlling the pace now the other way. Now that's a bad giveaway by Nanchoff on that side. You've got to keep the ball. You've got to play feet. Here's Blake Smith again. Smith and McLaughlin doing most of the running at the moment. Michael LaHood will switch things back. And See the visitors sort of just waiting, waiting. That's what you can do when you're up 1 0. Adoro and Anchoff now went it back for Tampa Bay. Well, Rowdy's fans, the next Tampa Bay Rowdy's home game will be Saturday, September 15th against Atlanta United FC. Reggie Ristoff, Joe Cole, and your Tampa Bay Rowdies battle Atlanta. United FC2 live on this TV Tampa Bay. This shot taken, and it'll sail high. This TV Tampa Bay, the broadcast home of your Tampa Bay Rowdies. Check your local listings or visit MORTV.com. You saw Taco going down the line, though. Good delivery into the box. A little bit short, and then, of course, Dominico Duro trying his luck once again from. 30 to 35 out. Okay. Rowdy's win it one more time. Got some numbers. Trying to send this one in across the pitch. And Gonzati, way too high for him to get to it. Yeah, that delivery. It's a good idea, though, by Zach Portillos looking for that far post, but the delivery's got to be there. It's got to be a little bit better, closer to the player with the advantage to the forward. Now, don't be surprised if uh, FC Cincinnati, Jay, they just start keeping the ball and trying to, as you see, once again, he's going to get a yellow for <laughs> time consumption here. That's what they're going to try to do. They're going to start doing that. They're going to try to start. Oh, oh, his second yellow. Wow. Major turning point in this match is Blake Smith dealt his second yellow, and the red comes out. He is sent off here well, at the 62nd. You talked about getting a break earlier from Neil Collins. Well, he's not going to get any better than this as far as getting a break. Blake Smith. Looking at my notes, he definitely did have a yellow card. He's second yellow. Subsequently, with the red card now, Drew, now everything's going to get interesting. FC Cincinnati with 10 players. Major dilemma for Alan Koch. And FC Cincinnati here 
Rowdies will have a distinctive edge the rest of the way. So this is when you have to definitely put some pressure going forward. Take your time, plenty of time left, Drew, but you got to be a lot more precise with the ball going forward. Take your chances, get some crosses. Anything around the 18, you have got to let it go. You got to take some shots. Fernando Adi once again gets the call. And you're going to start seeing that from Cincinnati just wasting time. Now just to put this in perspective, since June 2nd, the FC Cincinnati has allowed just nine goals in 14 USL games. Eight shutouts in league play and nine overall. They have been steamrolling the competition. And right now, you know, the Rowdies get that one-man edge and then immediately a couple whistles. Well, that's not a good call by a uh, good job by Diakati. You can tell he's all over Adi from behind. And as soon as you make contact, now look at the difference here in the shots. <laughs> Just dominated in that category. But the fouls is where the Rowdies have really suffered. Well, let's not forget, once again, if you look at the amount of time the FC Cincinnati is going to take, every time they have the, a dead ball, a set piece, they're going to take their time. They're going to try to roll the ball, try to squeeze 30, 40 seconds off the clock every time. So as a system, they're going to do it. So if you're the Rowdies, don't foul outside the box. Don't give them that advantage. Ball goes out of bounds. Hurry up, run and get it. Ledesma tries to go over the top with it. It goes over everybody. Yeah, try to surprise Daniel Vega, but a goalkeeper without much experience, you're not going to catch him like that. So let's see what the Rowdies can do here. A man up in the 65th minute. Still plenty of time, over 25 minutes to play with. He's going to get it for that. That's one thing that I just don't like to see, Eddie. After FC Cincinnati gets a red card, you're a man up and you give it away twice. A couple silly fouls and then a bad giveaway there. That's not a good start. Absolutely right, Drew. You cannot afford to give the ball away. And you got high pressure as well. See how far off they are the defenders. You got to stay closer. You got to high press, meaning you got to push all the lines and high press them. Force them to give you the ball. Lachlan slowing things down as he has all night long. Tries to sift through the Rowdy's back line, and there's just a blatant takedown. That could be a yellow easily. Yeah, but you, you do well. Hurry up and take it and go forward. Drew, this is going to be a great test, psychological test for the Rowdy. See how they react. Here's Junior Flemings now with some space to work with. Right side. This is Taku. Back to Junior. Junior turns. Tried to give it a blast with the left foot. And it goes awry. It's a good turn, though, by Flemings right outside the 18. He turns. Not a left-footed player, per se. He gets under the ball. Made one fan happy, that's for <laughs> sure. <laughs> one lucky customer runs around the field with a brand-new soccer ball. She's had some throw that back, doesn't she? Of course, but, you know, <laughs> she can have it for a little bit. Take a picture, perhaps. Another KPOC marketing substitution set to happen. And that is Pakonate. Uh, defender, number 12, will enter. And Fernando Adi, who was so excited to play here at Alink tonight on this beautiful pitch, will exit. And Adi comes out. Pakonate, the defender. And now that tells you what. The Cincinnati coaching staff, they're thinking, let's just play defense for the, for the next 20 minutes if needed here. Let's finish the game. Another substitution about to be made for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Georgie Ristoff getting loose. 
So he did Kite trying to calm everybody down as Zach Portillo is going to be handed a yellow here on the 68th. See exactly what went down. Well, and you see how much time they're taking, right? You see Zach Portillo's getting to the tackle there. You see, there's no foul there. There's no extension. There's no elbow. There's no leg sticking out. And you can see that diving, the amount of time he's spending on the ground. But Drew, you as a referee has got to take care of this game right here. If you don't start giving out yellow cards, players are going to keep doing that. K-Pak marketing sub once again, Georgie Ristoff. And for Afrin Taku. Well, everything's set for Georgie Ristoff to come in and be the hero in this game. He's got the record for most goals in the history of the Rowdies. Put him on top around the 18. Let him do what he does best, Drew. Put the ball in the back of the net when you need it the most. Can you do it? Can you deliver? Rowdy's still looking for that first goal. Two substitutes used for Tampa Bay. Nanchoff and Ristoff. Have to wonder, will the third be McCandlewary late? The Rowdies could get a goal here. That would be... Sort of setting the table for Tam to enter late, but you never know what that game plan is here tonight. Yeah, well, you can always bring him in, put him on defensive center mid, push Adoro forward, or a couple of different uh, things you could do, but you're right that you got to get a goal early in the first five minutes, ten minutes. If you want to have a chance to win the whole thing. Vegas sends it out. Aduro, contact there. Junior Fleming's trying to collect it. Poku center circle. Let's see if Tampa Bay can get a solid run in here. Poku slides a pass in, and now here's Nanchoff. Michael Nanchoff. Over to Junior Flemings. Flemings. And this one's going to be deflected out. Corner kick coming up. We invite you to cool off with Tampa Bay's hottest movie. Hits 24 hours a day on this TV, Tampa Bay. First premier broadcast movie channel featuring films from the world famous MGM library. Now playing for you all day and all night. This TV, Tampa Bay, the official broadcast home of the Tampa Bay Rowdies as we get ready for an Ashley Home Store corner kick. Shot straight on, Poku trying to get a foot on it. Looked like more contact, Newton pounces on it for the visitors. The Rowdies continue knocking on the door. Georgia Ristoff unleashes one, deflection. Oh. Poku trying to get there, you see the pool. That's a blatant hold right there. That force Lasso yep. wrapped his arms and you see around the referee, Poku. You see how close the referee is, so he's not too far from there. Definitely, he can see that. Anytime you're being pulled from behind, Drew. Contact in the box. Diakite. Up to Flemix. They converge on Junior. Wrist off. Fresh legs for Tampa Bay. After playing most of the contest on Wednesday night. This one sent in on the ground. And right back out. Again, Rowdy's a man up here in the 72nd minute, trying to equalize. And a rod over to Aduro. Dominic sliding one in. Gwensadi turning. Now it's Gorski. Nanchoff. Right up in the air into Newton. Well, stay up to date with all the best from social media around the USL by watching Off the Post with Kelsey Steele Friday evening on the USL social media channels. Here's one more look. And again, and you see that holding right there. 
the pushing referee close to that. That's a great angle. Thanks for our production crew. Great angle. You see what the referee got to see from that angle. Definitely contact Lasso in the box, making contact, pushing at the end of Poker, who was trying to get to the ball. Roddy's trying to stay crisp with it here late. Tough to do. Legs a little bit heavy, but still a man up. Now it's a Duro. Hunter Gorski to Flemings. Domaduro slides it over. Michael Nanchoff. And this one far post. Flemings. Nobody there in the center. Raddies will keep it though. Good possession here for Tampa Bay. Diakite. Pape. Sends it to Junior Flemings. Flemings on the ground. And it gets hammered out. Ristoff had it at his feet. Again, it was Lasso, the last line of defense. Yeah, you saw a great job by Diakite making a great run out of the back, splitting the entire defense. Plays the ball out to Flemings. Good early cross looking for Georgie Ristoff. That ball once again, same thing where Nancho, look at this ball to the near post, a little bit behind. And I believe we got an offside call there yep. also. Yeah, if you put that ball in the air to the far post, he knows Sebastian Gensari all by himself, far post. Michael Nanchev has to do a better job in that delivery from the left side of the field. Look at the corner kick edge tonight. Amazing. Nine field. Tampa Bay over the team in first place in the East. Well, I'll tell you what, Drew. If the Rowdies want to have a chance to go in the playoffs, this is the game that you have got to win. Poku continues the run. Poku shot. strikes in the 75th minute and finally the Rowdies can celebrate. Outstanding effort by Poku once again. We talked about big time players show up and big times right here. One, two, gets the ball, takes another player on and just like that, drives the ball to the back of the net. Nothing the goalkeeper Newt can do in a full extension. And just like that, the Rowdies tie it up with plenty of time in this game to finish it off, Drew. They got to win this game. What a time for his first goal as a Tampa Bay Rowdy. The midfielder from Ghana has erupted this home crowd at Al Lang. You can tell how active he's been throughout the game, running, tackling, collected a yellow early in this game, kept going on, kept winning those tackles, kept going forward, and finally, his first goal. Scored plenty of goals last year for Miami FC. More fresh legs in the form of Leo Fernandez for Sebastian Quinzati. I love Fernandez coming in right here in this situation. Leo with those great runs. Now here's a Duro. Ralph's mob going wild. Rowdies with all the momentum on their side. Gorski tries to go far with it. And you see Leo Fernandez right there already making things happen. And that's actually a great substitution by the skipper, Neil Collins, taking out Sebastian Gensati. Nitsch off on the ground. Fleming's waiting for it. He passes one in. Oh, Ristoff waiting for it. And the ball at his feet kicked off. The crowd loving it here. Great runs by Tampa Bay. Great job all throughout. Fleming's plays the ball back for Georgia Ristoff one time. And you can tell Cincinnati, they're back on their heels. They don't know how to get out. This is the time when you got to go forward, Drew. Keep going. And you see Danny Kunig about to check in. He's got 10 goals on the year. Certainly a threat for FC Cincinnati here late. The fans that did stick around through this weather delay have been treated for the most competitive match that we've seen all season. Tampa Bay and FC Cincinnati duking it out here late as Al Badawi will head out. Once again, you see this one-two on top of the box. 
Great job by Gonzati. Let's it go. Fleming's wrist off near post. And at the very last moment, Forrest Lasso just with a great block. Michael Nanchev right here for the corner kick. You've got to keep the pressure. Danny Kunick comes in the game for FC Cincinnati. And don't be surprised, Drew. I know he's a forward, but don't be surprised if they put him at defensive center mid or somewhere in the middle just trying to win balls. Right now, the routers are all over Cincinnati. They got to figure out a way to get out. Ashley, home store corner kick. Coming at you again. This one nice and high. And it will go. It'll be another Ashley home store corner kick coming up for Tampa Bay as Poe Drew heads over for the home team. And also Ristoff goes that way as well. Set piece right here, Georgia Ristoff. You see the amount of green and yellow in the box. Giaquita far post. Good ball in from Ristoff, headed right back out. Well, FC Cincinnati, remember last time they were here at Al Lang, it was last year in the postseason. The Rowdies handed them a 3-0 shutout and advanced on. This has not been an easy place well, for the visiting side. And they would love to do it again here. 12 minutes plus stoppage time. Plenty of time, Drew. Put the exclamation point in this game. Got to keep playing the game. They'll put the ball down and play. Got to hurry up in high pressure. Alan right Koch now. even picking it up off the pitch to try and let time roll. And whatever happens, if you're the routers, you want to keep the ball in bounds. Keep it in bounds. Remember, you have that extra player, that numerical advantage. Make it count. As you hear the bench from FC Cincinnati saying, keep it, keep the ball. Cincinnati just trying to possess. Not an easy thing to do. A very determined rowdy side at the moment. Dominic Aduro sliding, loses it. McLaughlin can't give up easy balls like that. And now Canate. Canate slowing things up. McLaughlin again. Rowdy's got to be careful here. And we'll have a corner kick coming up. Oh, it will be a goal kick. And a yellow dealt. I'm sure who was dealt to that time. I think it was by Adoro earlier. The actual the referee let the let the play go. He was signaling from before. Right here. He goes cleats up right here. Leaves his feed. Oh. Yeah, that's definitely a card. And you see he made contact with Walker right there. And that's what the referee was talking about. Daniel Vega, the Argentine goalkeeper. He's got to hurry up. Put the ball in play. Oh, we have a player down still. Alan Koch wanted a red card. <laughs> See another player down here. Kenny Walker, one of the reserves. Cincinnati taking as much time off the clock as possible. And Diakite not liking it on the rowdy side. And the team's right now John. Lahoud trying to put uh, some calm in his players. And you see, this is when you have to keep your head in the game. Game's on the line. Don't let him get you out. Rattled up, get a yellow before you know it. You're out with a red card. Just keep your calm. See, jumping in there, Mo Rod calming his teammates. That leadership, one of the big reasons why he was signed. Cooler heads prevail. Yeah, so was Daniel Vega as well. See, that's what I'm talking about. They get you out of your game. They draw the yellow. Imagine if you would have had a yellow. He would have been out. Certainly do not want to give the edge back to Cincinnati here. But through all of this, we just let about two and a half minutes go off the clock. So Cincinnati is proving their point, you know? Between the dives and the fouls, they're shaving some off the clock so you're hoping the referee stopped the watch when this whole thing started a 
another whistle. Wow. Gorski can't believe it. Come on. And neither can we. So once again, watch. Count the seconds. How much time he's shaving. How much time he's taking deliberately. Ball's blasted in the head. The Akite. Morales can't save it. 83rd minute. Should have significant extra time. Justin Hoyt, though, will throw it in on the far side. You have at least five to six minutes of extra time. Roddy's trying to win this one back. Visitors will take their time, especially a man down. Now it's Konate. Goes nice and wide with it to the corners. Gets it right back. Diakite's going to have to come over and help, and that's a great tackle. Oh, oh, my. oh no. No way did he call a penalty kick. Oh, wow. There is absolutely no contact. If you watch, the ball just stops. Diakite, a slight tackle, but never makes contact. Even the forward from Cincinnati stops. Rowdies have been dealt some bad calls this year, but this clearly is the most egregious. Watch, the forward from Cincinnati steps right there. There's no contact, he slides. There's no contact whatsoever. He's got the ball at his feet. Well, this is certainly, this is certainly gonna be an awful moment for our official moving forward, deciding this and match of course, a red card. He gives him a second yellow and subsequently a red card. So now they're even at 10 without without contact. I still cannot believe he called that a penalty kick. But we saw clearly in the replay how there's no contact. Dikite's night is through. And once again, late. Rowdies. They did not have bad luck. They'd have no luck here with the officiating this season. That is just awful. I would, I would have to agree with you. Not even close for being bad, awful. And I, you, you can only hope that the USL will, will, will have a look at what we've seen tonight because Eddie, uh, getting on officiating has always been an easy thing to do. Always try and hold back, give them the benefit of the doubt, but moments like that, that's just disgraceful. Ledesma makes it 2-1. to one. And FC Cincinnati now closing in on their 17th victory of the season. It is absolutely an awful call. You see Ledesma once again stutter step. Great penalty kick for him. And let's see now how the routers respond. And, and I know it's easier to put your head down. This one, you got to continue to go forward. There's still time in the clock. Five plus probably another five. Only reasoning in moments like that is if you're the Rowdies, you've committed so many fouls throughout the entire match that you're not going to get the benefit of the doubt. And yeah, I understand that, but you have to take, and it's not accumulation of, of different calls that, that, that led to a penalty kick. It was the fact that he's calling a penalty kick saying there's contact in the box. You're the last player, therefore you get a red card when you had a yellow. But there is absolutely no contact, and you saw that in the replay. The ball stops because there's accumulation of water. The Akite slips. And there's never contact with the forward. See if the Rowdies can suck this up here. Wrist off. And a throw out of bounds. Corner kick coming up. Head referee tonight is Kevin Broadley, by the way. And Broadley is going to have a very long week after watching that tape. In swing, inside the six. And Cincinnati hanging tight defensively as they have all year long with McLaughlin. 
Now the attacking the other way. Junior Flemings. That's got to be a card as well. Upended. Let's see if Bradley is going to pull out the card. There it is. I think it came out just in time as Patty Barrett is booked here. Yeah, see how late he is? There's oh. definitely. <laughs> I mean, wow. If that's not intention, high cleats and all. Is. Once again, the Rowdies with a great chance. Left side of the field, Michael Nanchuf. Left foot in swinger. Eighty ninth minute. Rowdies trying to equalize here late. Put in an incredible effort here tonight. FC Cincinnati trying to get their first win ever at Al Lang. Fleming's trying to get position. Comes out now, Dominic Caduro. Hunter Gorski. Gorski off the deflection. Oh, just to the left of the post. Great effort, though, by Gorski. Finds the ball. Great job by Fleming. Lays the ball off. Takes the ball to his left foot and lets it go. Ashley home score corner kick on the way. This header is going to go high. And now we're coming to the end of regulation. This great chance right here. Gorski goes to his left. There's actually a deflection by a defender. Gorski, one goal on the season that came against Toronto. That's been the story of the season. Just got to finish more chances. Have not done it in 2018. No, if you look at the chances we've had, I mean, just look at the numbers. Corner kicks, shots on goal, and you got to do the math and say, even percentage wise, you got to be able to put those in the back of the net. Well, he's trying to work here. He should get a word on extra time here momentarily. It's a big interception by Kanate. Kanate been a thorn in the rowdy side here late. And now FC Cincinnati, six minutes extra time. Sending one wide with Kanate again. Plenty of time, six minutes. Daniel Vega out of the bat for the Rowdies. Here's Ristoff. Georgie Ristoff dumps it off. Junior Flemings approaching from the left. Junior Flemings keeps it. Flemings sending one in and falling down that time. Not sure if there was contact. Leo Fernandez was there and Poku was calling for it. He was right in the middle of the box. Yeah, Poku was right open. And Flemings plays the ball across on the ground. Would have found Poku. Watch when he cuts the ball right there. Poker's right there by himself. See him right there in the middle of your screen. All by himself because everybody goes with Fernandez. Both center backs go with Leo. This season, Rowdies have signed nine different players. As Kevin Broadley, our official, has had a rough night here tonight. We're working through it. Still, Eddie. Nine players brought in throughout the season. Chemistry sometimes is going to be an issue. And plays like that, knowing where your fellow man is, I think next season the Reddies will be far better off. Evan Newton did get a yellow card for FC Cincinnati on that last exchange, just to keep you up to date. Nine players after the season started, right? Nine players were brought in, and you're right. The chemistry, a lot of the times, the timing of it, you saw, you know, the new, the latest player was Daniel Vega. 
Argentinian goalkeeper with a lot of experience, but you're right, it takes a little bit to develop that chemistry amongst the players in the locker room. And other times it takes a little bit longer than, than you want it to be, as you see, Ladesma's down for the second time. They're gonna hold up action once more. <laughs> now you cannot this tell me this. is just funny. Well, this is just systematically, right? Every time somebody gets touched, they go down, they waste another two or three minutes, and at some point as a referee, you've got to get a hold of this game. Tell us also, Eddie, I mean, of course you want to win, but when you constantly do that, you're starting to set a tone, you're heading to MLS, and, you know, you want to be a trendsetter in the league. That is not something that gets you respect from your fellow teammates or around the league, does it? No, of course not. You know, you saw Neymar in Brazil and do it. I mean, people start to, you know, dislike you. Even if you're a good player like Ledesma, he's got, he's got two goals, great player. But every time you go down, we know he's not hurt, obviously, because every time he gets up and he runs around. So if you do it as a system, it comes from your, uh, from your team and your coaching stuff, and you, they're telling you it's okay to do that, what kind of a sample are you, are you setting? Not only for younger rank, uh, generations, but there's a lot of kids here. Play on, Hunter Gorski and Tampa Bay. Time winding down, Leo Fernandez. The Rowdies will try and find feet here. You can certainly make something of this here late. Still a point at stake. Tough pass to Ristoff, it gets away. Both teams playing with 10 men here in the 94th minute. Damaduro, Junior Flemings. Setting the pace, as he has so many times this year. Sliding one in, Nanshoff. Left-footed shot deflected. Great job by Flemings, finding Nanshoff. Took a little bit too long, but see how quick Flemings is just getting to the end. As you see Poku fighting for the ball, the near side. Got about two minutes left. Do the Rowdies have two minutes left in them? Poku, he's played exceptional tonight. He'll get it forward. Manchoff coming back. See, watch FC Cincinnati's defense moving side to side. Fernandez and fisted out by Newton. Well, I think they're going to get one more, Drew, one more clear chance. As you see, Ledesma here going for that shoulder to shoulder contact. I told you he was fine. Now he's running around like nothing happened. Here's McLaughlin turning on Gorski. McLaughlin's dangerous. McLaughlin slides it through. Wettest part of the field there. Kenny Walker settles things. And now just about a minute to go. Precious time ticking away here late. Boy, shot taken. Vega on top of it. Rowdy's got to hurry up. One last chance. Daniel Vega out of the back. Want to start dumping balls forward, Drew. Be direct. Junior Flemings across the midfield line. Defense comes up to help. Flemings stays on his feet. Needs help. Nanchoff slides it off. Here's Poku. Poku makes a move. Here's Ristoff. Ristoff shoots it high over the crossbar. I told you that we're going to get one more clear chance. And he doesn't get any better than that. Georgie Ristoff wide open in the far post. Great job by Poku taking care of three. Looks up. How about this ball right here? Ristoff try to go cheeky little chip to the far post. Just gets under the ball a bit too much. So the Rowdies all-time goal scorer could not have asked for a better opportunity than that. And that kind of sums up how the night in the season has gone for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. What a run by Poku. Flemings, the effort there. The final third, just not. And just great job by Poku having that vision, knowing he's about to pull the trigger amongst three defenders. Just lays that great ball across the 18 to a wide open Georgie Ristov. All he had to do is put the ball down, find a corner. The skipper, Neil Collins, cannot believe the last chance the Radish were not able to capitalize. Credit Evan Newton. 
And that is why the FC Cincinnati is in the position that they're in. They were under fire here tonight. They faced all sort of obstacles and FC Cincinnati proving that they are the class of the league. You're absolutely right. Credit Evan Newton who came out, closed that angle. Therefore, Georgia Rista did not have more time to look up and find the corner. He rushed it because Newton came out, made himself big, sacrificed the body and just trying to make contact with the ball. Whistle blows one more time. FC Cincinnati still taking the air out of it. So extra time here. Got to figure Tampa Bay out of chances here in the 98th minute. Six minutes of extra time, but we have had a lot of unnecessary stoppages throughout. Well, I don't know they'll get another chance as clear as the one they just had, but you have to continue to go forward. And you got to start sending balls forward, be direct. This one sent out, and that is going to do it. FC Cincinnati winning any way they can. Certainly got the breaks tonight against the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Dominic Aduro unhappy. Rowdies fans unhappy. And I think this is one that referee Kevin Broadley is going to have to watch over and over and live with for weeks to come. Absolutely. And, you know, you hate to see when the referees have a hand in the game. We notice and we see all the time, you know, when you don't notice the referees, that they've done a good job. And unfortunately, this wasn't the case tonight. The referee pretty much changed the outcome of this game with one call. See Stuart Dobson, Rowdy's goalie coach, out there. Daniel Vega played so hard. The Rowdy's effort, I think the home fans appreciate everything that the Tampa Bay Rowdy's stood for here tonight. They really brought 110%. Let's send it to Heather with Coach. Thank you, Drew. Coach, a hard-fought game against the top-ranked team in the league, but I know this one's probably pretty tough to swallow. How can you sum up how this game went? Yeah, my heart, my heart bleeds for our players and our fans because we're putting everything into it, absolutely everything you can see tonight, every ounce of effort, and um, we're, not, we're not getting any rewards, and we, and we deserve rewards. Um, I have to pick the players up because They'll be heartbroken tonight, and um, we'll need to just keep fighting on. Um, it feels, as I say, like I said at halftime, the world's against us, and that's fine, bring on. All right, thanks, Coach. Guys. Tough night in the young coaching life of Neil Collins. 2-1, to one, the final score, FC Cincinnati over the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Hope you enjoyed it for Eddie Rodriguez and Heather Donnelly down on the field, along with our fabulous crew. I'm Drew Felios. Rowdies come up on the short end, but certainly much to play for in 2018. Thanks so much for hanging with us tonight. Have a great weekend.